Hello everyone and welcome to a very special video today. If you're a big fan of STC like myself and love to see new and hidden discoveries about your favourite Sonic comic, then this video is for you. In this video I'm going to be showing you many of the alternate covers that were never chosen for STC as well as many of the roughs of the covers that were chosen. You're going to see new images and illustrations of your favourite characters that you may have never seen before. I can tell you when I first saw these I was blown away with how awesome they are. I want to give a big shout out and thanks to Richard Elson for sending these across so we can all have a look at these and bask in just how awesome they truly are. Thank you. Now, these aren't in numerical order, so we will come across newer than older issue covers as we move along and vice versa. With all that out of the way, let's get started. So we immediately start with some of the cover roughs for issue 176. You might be quite familiar with the one on the right. Now, before I start moving on to other ones, I just want to give a quick shout out that Richard Elson, um, he told me he usually did around two to four different cover variations for each cover art that he did. So we might come across more cover roughs uh, for one issue compared to another. This particular issue, 176, we have three different um, cover variations and I'm going to show you the finished version um, after each uh, cover rough as we move along. So usually there's numbers on the top here telling you um, which um, you know cover rough it is. So we've got one and two. We're going to move to cover three in just a moment. So this is um, a pretty big uh, issue because of course this is the Sonic Adventure uh, arc as we're getting into and we've got cover rough one here now this is a really awesome uh, cover rough um, of course this is one that wasn't chosen but we've got chaos literally shooting up towards Sonic we've got a pretty um, it's pretty rare to have an illustration of the back of Sonic especially on a cover art well it's not entirely the exact back of him but it's like a side back shot of him and we've got, you might just be able to see him here, we've got Tails here in a kind of really surprised expression. And we've got Amy here and also Johnny there trying to connect the cables, which would obviously foreshadow what was going to happen. Now, this is the cover rough for the second one. And you might be looking at this and thinking this is actually the finished version. It's not. There's actually some changes. The actual third cover rough for this issue is this one. Now, this was actually the chosen cover rough for 176. And you'll see that there might be some notes here from either Richard himself or maybe um, the editor. Um, as you can see, this one says revised cover sketch. So this is, of course, the cover we are most familiar with, where you've got Sonic trying to connect the cables and you've got Chaos there jutting out of the... Um, like the, the sewers, wasn't it? He was jumping out because he had just been defeated in the previous issue. Um, as you can see from the second one, there was quite a few changes. Sonic was made a lot bigger. As you can see, there's the note here that says Sonic bigger. He's much bigger chosen here, and he's actually kind of, he's on the floor here, essentially, trying to connect it, whereas on uh, this one, um, he's standing. Usually Sonic... Well, he's the main character. He's supposed to be the biggest thing on each cover because it's Sonic the Hedgehog, right? He's the selling part of the comic, and the comic is called Sonic Comic. This one's quite interesting because you've got some notes here that would have said there would have been some sparks. And also the biggest thing that was cut from this cover is, of course, the characters. You've got Amy Rose here. You've got Taos and Johnny, and they was actually completely scribbled out. Um, obviously, that was going to be completely removed for the revised cover. Um, in hindsight, I definitely think this was the best cover chosen, without a doubt. I mean, look at it, this is awesome. Um, it didn't need any extra characters on there at all, I don't think. And you've also got there was going to be some outlines of buildings. Of course, the finished version of this cover looks like this, which obviously looks really awesome, right? I think it worked just perfectly with just Sonic and Chaos on this cover, giving you... Uh, a grasp of what was going to be contained within this issue. Okay, moving on. We're going back a few issues now. These are actually the cover roughs for issue 811. And um, the 
first one here was of course the one that was actually chosen to be the cover um, rough for it. And you've got Sonic here, of course, who just smashed open uh, one of the Draken prosecutors and discovered that they are actually like an advanced intelligent fish race. This is pretty awesome. It's it's a pretty um of course if you was buying these comics at the time and you'd seen this cover, you'd have been like, Well, what on earth is this? It's a bit of a um, mystery of the cover and you kind of want to see exactly what uh, the story is especially as this was continuing on from the evil empire the big showdown between sonic and um, metal knuckles metallics as we can see here this cover variant is is sonic literally jumping through the draken prosecutor which of course does happen in um, the strip itself and we've got a few notes here bright yellow with some puddles plus fish and you can see this little triangle here that's put here. Sometimes it will say Sonic the Comic, sometimes it won't. This, of course, would be the title of the comic uh, going in this triangle. If you're very familiar with Sonic the Comic's logo, then you, of course, know that. And if you see any like blank spots that are around the cover, these are, of course, going to be left for the titles and any description writing or any competitions or whatnot was going to be inside. Of course, this was the finished version of the cover. And it looks pretty awesome as well. I think the yellow background really kind of makes this cover stand out. As I said, you kind of got the mystery of here, like the tile here is kind of cut off a little bit, some of here, but does Sonic meet a slippery end in the evil empire? So if you, as I said, you're buying this issue, is looking at this, you're thinking, wow, this is pretty interesting. I kind of want to know the conclusion of this story, of which this story had. You've got the puddle here, as the description's just going to say here, puddles. So definitely, I think this was a, a better cover chosen, the, the one that was chosen. This actual illustration was um, used in the strip itself, and you'll see that a few times um, from some of the cover roughs we come across. Um, some of the illustrations that were used on some of these cover roughs, they weren't exactly cut completely, and sometimes they were actually uh, incorporated into the actual strip itself. And in some uh, instances, they might have been used on another cover or even a poster. We'll get to some of those. So, yeah, that's the finished version of issue 111. Moving on. Now, this was actually the cover art. Let me just check the finished one. 164. And, of course, um, it, it's a bit of an interesting one because it's kind of like, essentially, number one was chosen. But they kind of uh, used some of the elements from the second one as well here. The second one didn't really have uh, entirely much put into the background here before it's finished. If you can see, here's the finished version of it. Whereas um, it's kind of like slightly this sonic pose was used, but it was kind of mirrored in reverse. And this mummy with the big rock was put behind him. It was obviously it was changed a little bit. And Amy, who is like right over in the right hand side here, was put over in the left hand side. And you've of course got some of the mummies and the pyramids in the background there. And I'll zoom in on a couple of the descriptions here so you can read these. This one says here, some of the notes here, less mummies, holding rock, which we see in this one over here on the right, which was chosen. Amy here, and I can't. I think that says good position for Amy, so maybe um, the, the notes implying that Amy needed to have a better position for this cover. And the tile here, uh, not tile, sorry, the note on Sonic's head here, actually, the middle of it says he needed to be much bigger. Which you might see a lot, some of the notes saying Sonic needs to be bigger. So, of course, he's much bigger here, as you can see. And Amy's in a better position, you can kind of see her, whereas you can't. She's kind of a little bit in the background, a bit too much there. So, in a way, both cover roughs were kind of being combined into one to provide us with this, the finished product for issue 164, which is pretty awesome. Okay, so now we get to issue 180, and this is, this is two actual really uh, awesome cover roughs, and to be honest with you, I would have been kind of fine with either of these uh, covers. Number two, if you're obviously up to your Sonic the Comic knowledge, you'll know this was the one that was chosen with the Draken Prosecutor slamming Sonic to the ground here. In a way, I suppose it's quite dramatic, because if you're looking at this cover for the first time, you'll, like, you'll recognise that, of course, a Draken Prosecutor was teased in issue 179, 
and once you come across this issue you're like wow Sonic's actually being um, slung around here pretty easily um, of course this was the finished version of uh, issue 180 so not much really changed too much it looks like some of the background was changed a little bit on the cover rough um, more detail was added you know Sonic slamming right into the rocks there you can kind of see the green bush there as well which is more present in the rough this illustration was kind of used in the actual strip itself as I said that some of the illustrations were used this is it's quite an interesting one I suppose having this on the cover I do like this you know got like Sonic really aggressively grabbing the Draken prosecutor's head of course if you've read this story he actually snaps his neck backwards and then rips it off of course, as I said earlier, Drake and Prosecutors are actually from the sea and they're a fish race and the rest of their body, other than the head, is mechanical. But yeah, honestly, I like both these covers just as much and I would have been fine with both. And um, here's obviously a finished cover. I suppose this one might have not worked as well with some of the text and stuff all around here. As you can see, like you had a Dreamcast promotion here at the time. Crash landing, that would have kind of covered the... Uh, this section of the Drake and Prosecutor a bit too much. So it's a shame this one didn't get used as a poster. So yeah. Now here we come to actually one of the summer holiday special cover roughs. And these are really awesome. And in fact, um, if you've seen the finished version of this cover before, um, both of these ones kind of aren't it really. In fact, from what I can see, looking at it, it looks like both cover arts were combined into one because the similarities used in both cover one and cover two this is the finished product version as you can see Sonic jumping towards you here and you've got Robotnik and Grimer on a roller coaster I always thought this was quite funny because you can clearly see the roller coaster's got loops here and like uh, Robotnik and Grimer, uh, Grimer sorry, are just standing there and you think how on earth have they not just fallen out but yeah the pose for Sonic is kind of used from cover two, but again, it's uh, mirrored to a, to a degree. You've got Sonic's um, foot out onto the left-hand side instead. And although Grimmer and Robotnik uh, are in a roller coaster in the cover variant, uh, cover rough, sorry, for two, it's much more the pose from cover rough one because you've got Robotnik you know, with a megaphone and Grimer. Although Grimer's on the other side here, they've kind of like put him with Robotnik. And you see Robotnik's got the, the megaphone here shouting at Sonic. And you can see they changed Robotnik's outfit for the cover instead because it coincided with the strip that was inside it, uh, inside this uh, summer holiday special because Robotnik was in disguise. Um... This one kind of looks like it's got a lot more detail that could have potentially have been in the cover rough. You see you've got like a Sega logo here and you've got several Sonic, um, you've got like a Sonic statue there and you've got Sonic's face here on the roller coaster. Um, some of these details were unfortunately kind of removed for it. Maybe time restraints perhaps. Um, I guess the background on this one was kind of left a little bit... Um, a little bit bare but then when you think you've got the title here and stuff um, a lot of it would have been covered and you know time constraints and whatnot it's a shame because I do really like this if we zoom in on some of the descriptions we've got here <coughs> excuse me um, you got it says here Sonic leaps forward in BG director Robotnik angrily shouts action and Grimer holds a clipper board removing Sonic the movie that's pretty awesome. As you can see here, Sonic the movie, take one. Grimer's got it there. And Robotnik's actually jumping out of the director chair. <clears throat> On this one, um, Sonic theme park with Robotnik and Grimer causing, uh, chasing Sonic on a high-speed roller coaster. And you can see the notes here saying that they were going to drop all the details here of um, like the coaster and Sonic stuff here. Simpler uh, bot drawing. Yeah. And you can see um, Robotnik and Grimer in the coaster. Definitely glad they changed uh, Grimer and Robotnik's position here from the cover rough because it's much more uh, in your face on um, the finished version. As I said, it's kind of like they combined both covers into this, which looks pretty awesome. Don't get me wrong, I do like this cover a lot. This is an awesome cover. Also, really love the um, 
a little text here that says watch out for Sega World as um, Sega World was um, pretty soon to be opening not long after the release of this holiday special um, Sega World that is um, that was in the Trocadero in uh, central London of course also win a Sega Saturn ah good times anyway moving on so here we come to uh, some three different uh, cover variations for definitely one of the most fondly remembered single stories from an issue of all of Sonic the Comic. And that is issue 76, and the story was titled The Big Decision. Now this is the very famous story where Porker Lewis quits the Freedom Fire gang, and I really really love honestly all of the cover roughs for um this issue and the story itself is of course very memorable and awesome but here's cover uh one and two and i'm going to go through both of them in uh, all detail as we move on but this was of course uh cover rough three and you'll probably definitely recognize this cover because this is the one that was actually chosen um a bit of a controversial story with some sonic fans because um, especially some maybe newer Sonic fans that aren't really familiar with Sonic the comic. A lot of people aren't, um, they weren't very too happy with Sonic's reaction to Porker Lewis and um, you know, him quitting the uh, the Freedom Fighters gang. Um, they honestly thought he was, he acted way, uh, way out of line. Um, but yeah, this is not to really essentially talk about um, the story, it's the cover-ups. Um, of course, if you read the whole story, you'll find that Sonic indeed uh, sees the error of his ways at the end. And both him and Porker make up and they both go their separate ways. That is awesome character writing and character development for uh, Sonic the Hedgehog, without a doubt. That's how you write a character. Take note, uh, modern writers of Sonic the Hedgehog. But anyway... Let's look at cover rough one and two, especially cover rough two, because that's definitely the one that is honestly pretty awesome. But yeah, this the first one here, you've got a trooper punching Sonic, or Sonic's just about maybe getting out of the way, and you've got Porker like crying here. Now both these illustrations were kind of used in the strip itself, because this you did have a trooper punching Sonic, and Porker was indeed crying in one of the scenes. Now, moving to cover rough two. Now, this is a really, really awesome cover rough. Honestly, I've got to admit, um, you would honestly never see a cover like this in Sonic media today, and perhaps even a lot of Sonic media in general, to be honest with you. Um, you've got Sonic here, like, unconscious on the floor here, and of course this is the trooper holding a gun to Sonic's head with the implication that it's going to literally, like, fire the bullet at unconsciously at Sonic's head and you've got Porker Lewis here literally walking away and leaving Sonic to his own doom and you'll notice here if um, you just little look at the back of Porker the jackets that he, he and uh, some of the other characters wear in Sonic the comic they actually have Sonic's face on the back of their coats and the back of his coat is actually crossed out which is a pretty powerful image of him walking away while Sonic's about to meet his doom um, I mean the fact that you've got like a, a gun pointed at Sonic's head. I mean, Sonic the Comet was never sh to shied away from uh, using guns um, uh, in its comic series, but yeah, this would definitely not get a green light in today's, uh, in the, t the, the current climate we have in today's uh, world is, uh, you know, you'd never see like a cover like this on a cover of like IDW, Sonic comic or something. It's, um, yeah, this would have been, honestly, I would really have loved to have seen this one having been the chosen cover. But in a way, I can kind of see um, maybe why it's not, because it does Im Im imply that maybe Pork Lewis is actually betraying Sonic, which he, of course, doesn't. Um, we move to cover three. In fact, Pork is just, uh, he just essentially quits. He can't take it anymore. Basically, this story, it's a very powerful story, this one, because it shows you the effects of what war has on people and the emotional uh physical psychological impact of what war has on the mind of a person you know very very powerful to show these images especially in a sonic comic of what this would do to the to a person and of course this is the cover that was chosen and um you've got all the characters here sonic tails johnny and amy amy's pretty cross at sonic here and you've got porker walking away um 
um, upset. And we're going to get to the notes on here of each of the cover roughs that were choked, that was wrote by um, Richard. But before I, uh, I put that, I, I really honestly like this. Like, it's kind of like a little joke that was put at the top here. It says, in this special vegetarian issue, Porker gets the chop. And then, of course, Porker's a pig, right? It's pretty good. Uh, of course, the, this text and joke wasn't um, put on there. It would have been pretty funny if it had been. But the notes here on the right here um, give description of what the cover, the you know, the, what was going on with each of the cover roughs. So cover rough one says, basic fight pick, maybe have some dialogue on it, e.g. Sonic. Sonic saying, help me, Porker. Porker's like, no, Sonic, I've had enough. You're on your own. Um, pretty powerful, honestly. Uh, cover rough two saying, badniks holding gun in foreground. Porker walks away into distance. The Sonic picture on his back, on his jacket, is crossed out. And cover rough three, uh, self-explanatory, which it pretty much is, isn't it? The characters are all uh, you know, standing there and Porker's walking away. Um, I can see why cover rough three was chosen, or cover, cover three in, in general. It's more accurate to the story, I guess, in say, but honestly, I would really have loved to have seen the second one done. Here's all three of them, and actually the finished cover that was chosen. I actually own the original artwork for this issue, uh, 76. And this is actually the original artwork I've put next to it, so you can get a good comparison of what all three of them look like. Um, the really awesome details here. Of course, this blank bit at the top would have been where the Sonic the Comic tile and other descriptions would have gone. And there would have been a little, the barcode and stuff would have been here. As you can see on cover rough one, that is where the barcode was going to be. Um, not really much changed too much, I think, between the characters. Tao's, um, Tao's and Amy were definitely given uh, more details, as you can see. But their, their uh, expressions remain the same, as does Porker's. I guess in this one, Porker's eyes are actually closed by the looks of it, whereas they actually change it to open, and he's more really upset, really. So, yeah, really, really awesome. Um, if you're not familiar with Sonic the Comic, definitely check out issue 76. It's a really, really well-written um, story, and the artwork is just top-notch as always. So, yeah, moving on. Here we actually have some uh, character production artwork. So I've got a few of these in here because they were uh, sent in with um, these cover roughs. And this is actually Lou, a Lou Stringer sketch, actually. And this is actually production artwork, um, his rough version of what Commander Brutus was going to look like. Of course, Commander Brutus, one of the uh, prominent uh, villains from Sonic the Comic. Very, uh, definitely one of Lou Stringer's um, most well-known and popular characters. Honestly, to me, he's one of my favourite uh, villains from Sonic the Comic. One of the only few characters that Sonic has never actually been able to defeat without transforming into Super Sonic. But let's uh, have a little look at the notes he's put here. So he's put Deb, which was uh, short for Deborah Tate, who was the editor at the time. Here's a very... Uh, very sorry, very quick sketch of how I envision Brutus, a sort of Roman centurion, uh, Doctor Doom type, and Lou. And some of his notes here say crown type helmet and hand replaced with blaster, but only at the end of the story. Of course, he lost, he loses his hand. Sorry, um, at the uh, really at the hand, no pun intended, of Super Sonic, who smashes his hand and most of his arm off. Uh, golden armor to indicate superiority over other troopers. And he's also wrote a note here, obviously this was approved by Deborah, to Richard saying, here's the Brutus sketch, uh, alter it if you wish. This is only to give you an idea. So as you can see, some of the ideas were definitely taken across to the finished version. Let's have a look at the finished version for those not familiar with Brutus. This is the finished version that Richard Elson gave us. I really, really love the character design of Commander Bruce. He just honestly looks awesome. Just look how jacked up he looks. He's, uh, he's got a massive cape. His cape was uh, increased uh, immensely, really, from the original production sketch. Um, you can see like the uh, little symbols on the cape here, kind of like the skulls they were kept on, and the horns on, um, kind of horns or spikes, really, I suppose you could say, on the helmet. Um, he was made kind of like to have a little bit more of a circular... A helmet from Richard. Yeah, his his design here looks is awesome. I kind of Richard kind of changed uh, some of the designs of uh, the knees, 
legs part, but honestly, look, he's kind of got these uh, like brackets around his knees here. Really, really awesome. You can tell he's just uh, a trooper that was designed for battle. I mean, look at that guy. So yeah, moving on. Here we come to, as we were talking about issue 76, The Big Decision, um, that story was reprinted in issue 896. And for those that are not familiar, um, after issue 184, which was the final story for Sonic the Comic, issue 185 to issue 223 contained all reprint stories from previous stories from Sonic the Comic. However, the cover artworks for... Uh, each of the issues from a 185 to 223 was actually a brand new cover artwork um, from Richard Elson. However, it, it used uh, the modern uh, depictions of the Sonic the Hedgehog characters that was brought in from the Sonic Adventure arc from issue 175, I believe it was. So yeah, this was the reprint story for The Big Decision. So, as you can see here, Sonic's unconscious... Um, with the three troopers who were from the story. Um, I'm not entirely sure whether Sonic's meant to be looking like he's hurt here or he's actually pretending to be hurt because he's kind of looks like he's got a bit of a smile here, but it kind of looks like he's waiting to attack maybe. But of course, he actually doesn't attack these troopers. It's actually Porco Lewis that defeats them. And cover rough two, we've got kind of like an angry Sonic looking while Porco's walking away to the tornado which is at the end of the story, which is um, not entirely accurate, this one, because, of course, Sonic's not angry at the end of this story. He's actually really happy that, um, you know, Porker's going to set off to do his new life. So, a bit interesting. Um, of course, here's the cover rough that, for the one that was actually chosen, which was essentially a revised version of the cover artwork of issue 76. Um, so the character positions are changed a little bit. Um, Porker's kind of more centered in the 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 cover here really um i'm kind of gl i'm glad they went with this cover one instead the revised version um it looks good obviously the characters are in their modern incarnations as i said from uh, the sonic adventure arc Tails is probably the biggest change to this cover he looks like absolutely bewildered like oh my god what, what are you doing like you know <laughs> he wasn't that shocked in the, the original cover art but yeah Pretty awesome stuff. Um, I'm glad they went with this one, as I said. The, these two kind of really don't make, make uh, much sense to me. And the artwork, of course, is awesome on them. Richard art, uh, Richard, uh, Richard's artwork is always uh, awesome. But, um, yeah, I'm glad, I'm glad this one was this is the one they went with. Okay. And, of course, here is actually the finished version of uh, issue 196 and what it looks like. So whereas the characters were kind of all uh, lined up here at the back, they're kind of like in a bit more of a group here. And as I said, Pork is definitely more centered on the cover of this one. And the title says, I quit. See Pork Lewis turn his back on Sonic inside. This issue also comes with some free stickers, as you can see there. Moving on. So here we come to one of my favorite stories from Sonic the Comic. Definitely one of my favorite stories that Lou Stringer wrote, and that was the Game Over arc. Um, I absolutely love this story. This story saved the end, essentially, of Sonic and Robotnik's uh, feud, I guess you could say, at the end of their clash through the story, because this would be the final story where the two of them would actually clash. Where well, the Sonic Adventure arc would come after this. It weren't really nothing. To, it wasn't really Sonic and Robotnik's story. In fact, Sonic and Robotnik actually share no interaction with each other in that story. This, to me, is what I consider the final showdown between Sonic and Robotnik in Sonic the Comic. And this was the cover roughs for issue 173. Um, if you're familiar with this issue, you'll recognise that issue 173, cover rough one. This was the one that was actually chosen. You can see that. And this is the cover rough two. Um, here's actually the finished version before I go back and talk about them. Alien attack. Sonic gets into a sticky situation as the evil plaques strike back. Honestly, I really, really love the uh, second rough version of this cover. A cover with Sonic and Robotnik on it is always going to be awesome. And this is absolutely incredible. 
Of course, you've got Robotnik plugged into the Plaxus machine here as he's siphoning the energy from planet Mobius, killing the planet essentially, while turning himself into a suicidal, power crazed, almost godlike maniac. Um, as much as I absolutely do love this cover art, and I would love to have seen this actually coloured and finished, I, it makes more sense that they went with this one because Sonic and Robotnik only encounter each other actually at the end of um, this story, part one of Game Over. Um, and Sonic doesn't actually even see Robotnik in this kind of state where he's like this because he actually transforms into a completely muscular form as he fights Sonic. So as much as I love Robotnik and seeing them two together, it makes more sense to have this this on there. Because at the end of the day, this was Sonic versus the plaques in this issue, so it makes more sense to have this one. The notes on the Sonic's head here, I can't see what it says. It says, right number for John. So it probably was John M. Burns who was the colorist for this cover art, um, as you can see here. All right, moving on. Okay, so now we have um, some cover-ups for a really early issue of Sonic the Comic. We've actually gone way back now to issue 38. And um, this issue had uh, two cover-ups done for it. And um, you're probably already noticing the cover-up that was chosen to be uh, on the uh, front cover of this issue. And that is number one, you can see here. Uh, the second one I do like as well, because it's always awesome to see uh, you know, Sonic and Knuckles duke it out. But I'm glad they went with uh, number one here because it's it's awesome to see Knuckles here at the front and center, especially in Richard Elson style um, on a front cover artwork. It's quite a powerful cover, really, having Knuckles right in the center here with Sonic um, kind of like put right at the back here. It goes to show you that he was um, definitely implied, even at this early stage, that um, Knuckles was going to be an important character to uh, Sonic the comic. And of course, this was around the time that Sonic the Hedgehog 3 was out, because this was a game adaptation of uh, Sonic the Hedgehog 3. Um, the finished version of this cover looks like this. This is the one you'll all be familiar with. So you can see it was trying to change a little bit. Knuckles, it's kind of like Knuckles and Sonic were moved a little bit further backwards, uh, so you, you can get a little bit more of the background here. And Sonic was um, put right here. It's not too much change. It kind of looks like Sonic was actually moved a little bit further back, actually. But yeah, really, really awesome. Really do like this issue, too. The artwork's just awesome as well, as always, from uh, Richard. Okay, so now we've actually gone really far forward up to issue um, 213. So one of the reprint uh, story um, for Sonic the Comic. Um, cover Rough 2 was the one that was chosen. You've got Sonic, Tails and Knuckles here. Um, this is an interesting one. I do quite like the rough for this uh, unchosen cover. The finished version looks like this. This is what the finished version looks like. Um, I like this one because it has a lot of detail with some backgrounds here, with buildings and stuff. Um, I really like how angry Sonic and Knuckles look here. This is quite an interesting pose Sonic's doing as well as he's kind of like running forward. The only thing I don't really, doesn't really make much sense of this cover is you've got Sonic and Knuckles who look proper angry. You've got Sonic, uh, not Sonic, um, Tower's looking cheerful at the back here. It kind of is like, you know, if Sonic looks this angry, why is Tower's happy? Like, So this one kind of makes a lot more sense, really. You've got Sonic who's not as angry looking in the chosen cover. Knuckles um, kind of looks like he's not as mad here, but he looks a little bit like they made him a little bit more of a frown um, in the finished version. And Tails is more like, um, you know, what's going on expression as opposed to being happy. So this one makes a little bit more sense, really, as you can see here. And, uh, oop, going too far ahead here. Yeah, they kind of moved the... Uh, the characters zoomed in a bit closer for the finished version you can see here awesome stuff so now we've uh, moved on um, to another uh, early issue of um, uh, Sonic the comic and this is actually I had to zoom forward a bit just so I could get the uh, number right this is actually issue 37 so let's go back now this 
issue had four different cover-ups chosen and you might recognize all actually uh, the majority of these illustrations actually. Now I love all of these uh, covers to be honest with you and I would have been happy to have any four of these chosen for um, issue 37. As they all centered around Knuckles really, the story, um, you've got Knuckles, you know, smashing this trooper up here. It's a pretty dynamic um, pose. Really like that. You've got the cover up here for the second one. Now, you might be getting a little feeling of deja vu here. You might be recognizing this illustration. And that is because this actually was used as another cover art. It actually was chosen for it to be the cover art of a... Um, Another issue of Sonic the Comic, only a few issues after this, as Knuckles returns to the floating island. The background was changed slightly because it looks like Knuckles is gliding over Mobius here, whereas it was changed because he was actually returning to the floating island, so it was more like he was in the sky. And this was actually used as a poster as well. In um, A couple of times this was actually used as a poster in Sonic the Comic. Really, really awesome. This was, of course, the one that was chosen. Um, number three. Essentially, I suppose you could say it's the most basic out of the four, um, but it's pretty awesome to see Sonic and Knuckles always going to head to head here. This zoomed up shot. Uh, the editor might have chosen number three because, you know, there was like, you know, Sonic needs to be on the cover, perhaps. I'm just uh, assuming here. It might not be the case. Um, number four is also, you know, really awesome. In a way, I kind of would have liked number four to have been chosen out of all of these. I don't get me wrong, I love all of them, but this is awesome. You've got Knuckles here, uh, you've got fragments of destroyed bad necks, as it says here in the notes, and you've of course got the Death Egg in the background here. And the Death Egg weren't really used in uh, used on cover artworks at all, really, from what I can remember. So honestly, I would really have loved to have seen this one uh, chosen. It just looks awesome. The, the, the detail Richard would probably have put in this as well in the background of the Death Egg here and all smashed stuff would have been incredible. But, you know, I love all of them. And this was, of course, the finished version. Sonic and Knuckles, head to head to dread against Robotnik. Look at that release date there, look, October 28th, 1994. So it's almost like 26 years ago. Crazy stuff. And I'm actually very... Uh, privileged and lucky to actually own the original artwork for this one. Here's actually what the original artwork looks like. Richard's finished version in the flesh without any of the text or anything over it. You can actually uh, see a lot more of the, the, the details because you don't even actually see this part of Knuckles is um, gloves here, the detail that Richard put on here. And you don't even see this part of Sonic's arm, whereas, um, sorry, um, on the the uh, printed cover you don't whereas the original you see all of this awesome stuff really really cool moving on so going straight far ahead we've got to issue 203 very important story this was actually the reprint story from a lot of people say their favorite story from all of sonic the comic the famously known running wild arc where Super Sonic truly makes his groove and goes on the rampage. And these are both, honestly, awesome, awesome covers because it's always great to see Super Sonic, right, make his reappearance. And it, to see him on a front cover as well is uh, also really, really cool. Um, this is what the finished cover is. They obviously went with number one, which I'm really glad they did. I like the second one as well. You've got Super Sonic blasting towards you here. He's actually hit Tails and Amy and Johnny, and they're all like her in the background. But this one just looks really, really cool because you've got like, wow, like what is what has Super Sonic done here? He's got unconscious Tails and Amy. You've got, you know, here's look at the finished one here. You've got fire all around them, smokes like, wow, what's he? He's like literally defeated them and um yeah i really like this i like his expression here really really cool not much was changed too much it kind of looks like um maybe uh it literally looks like there weren't too much changed really it was literally uh that was what it was going to be chosen just more details really in the background on the smoke 
So, yeah, I would have been fine, honestly, if they had chosen cover two, because it's super sunny well, but yeah, really glad they went with this one instead, and that just looks awesome, right? And here's actually the original artwork for this cover. So, you can see here, they really zoom in on these artworks when they go to the print press, when it's going to be chosen, because although this looks like this is all like so much blank area here, it's obviously zoomed in dramatically, and this is where the text is going to go, as I've said uh, many times in this video already. Really, really awesome stuff. Moving on. Here we actually have, we're actually in numerical order on for once, right? We're actually on to issue 204, which was actually part three of the Running Wild arc. These are two quite drastically different covers, really. Um, here's actually the bar scene, which is quite an interesting one, really. You've got all of the like thug, thugs in the bars and the drunks who are surrounding Sonic because they want to claim Robotnik's reward. And Sonic's, um, he's kind of panicking when this is going on because they don't want him to stress him out so he'll turn into Super Sonic. So this kind of expression he's got here kind of really isn't accurate to what happens in the story because he's more actually quite worried for the safety of um, these people, really, because he doesn't want to, you know, essentially hurt or even kill any of them, right, even if they are bad people. Um, it's pretty cool to see, like, random Mobians, really, on a cover. But, of course, you know... I'm glad they chose the second one because, you know, it's supersonic, right? And we want to see more supersonic as uh, here he is. Plus, this one's more accurate, the expression to what happened, what's happening in the story inside. You've got Amy with the Kinto Ball computer attaching Sonic to the star post as they're about to trap him as Sonic and Supersonic are about to split in two. Here is, of course, the finished version. <clears throat> Excuse me. Awesome cover. The, the the colors on Supersonic are awesome as well. As always, Richard's coloring is just it's incredible. Otherwise, I don't think much else has changed. Uh, Amy, Johnny, and Towers look like they're all in the same expressions. Of course, more details definitely was adding on them, as you can see here. Okay. Here is of here is of also the original artwork for this issue. You can see a lot more. Uh, you know, light coming out of the star post here with it um, seeing the original uh, like this. Really, really awesome stuff. Okay, here is the cover roughs for issue 214. So we're getting very close um, to the final victory issue. We're actually at Doomsday now. And I like both these cover artworks. And to be honest with you, I actually would have rather they'd gone with cover one. Cover two was the one that was chosen. <clears throat> Don't get me wrong, I really love this uh, centered expression, this really serious uh, expression of Sonic as he is about to um, catch uh, the vials that was thrown by the crazy doctor. Um, was it Dr. Plaque? I believe it was. It was Plaque or Plagueis. We're going to get to it in a minute. His name does pop up. Um, but this one's actually really cool because you've actually got the villain that was actually used in this story. Here he is here. And you've got actually Lord Sidewinder here who actually sadly doesn't actually appear on any of the cover artworks. Um, at least not in this kind of uh, this kind of centered uh, to the cover story here. And he's actually a, quite an important part of this story. Um, and this expression of Sonic here, I really, really like this and the pose as well. It's just awesome. Um, I like the second one, don't get me wrong, but I would really have loved to have them to have seen uh, this one as the finished one instead. Would have been awesome. Sidewinder definitely deserved to have a cover art appearance like this. And it's not the last time we're going to see him on here either. And here is the finished version. Awesome stuff. Okay, moving on. So here we have um, a couple of the cover roughs for issue um, 212. Now it says three and four here, but I haven't got uh, one and two. So this might actually be an error. There might have been four cover roughs that was done for this, but I haven't got one and two. Um, but both of these are actually pretty awesome. Of course, here is the finished version. And, you know, there was some slight uh, changes to stuff around. There's a lot more detail that was, of course, added in the background for this from the cover roughs. 
Of course, it was uh, number four here that was actually chosen as the cover. And you can see there was going to be details intended for the background on this rough, because you can see Richard has outlined squares here where there was going to be stuff. And you can see there was actually another cover artwork that was used uh, in the background here. And you've got a wanted photo and a couple other bits. A lot of um, more detail on trash that was uh, added all around. Um, I'm a little bit torn, really. I actually really like both of these covers. Um, I actually prefer the expressions here on the uh, cover rough three of Sonic and Knuckles. You've got Sonic in kind of like a thinking expression. And you've got Knuckles kind of like, you know, like, come on, Sonic, what are you doing? Like, as he's like sitting here, he's kind of, um, yeah. Whereas this Knuckles here, he's in a um, much more serious expression. Um, this one's, of course, zoomed in a lot more on the characters, and you can't see as much details. You wouldn't have definitely seen as much of the background here in this. Um, I don't know. I really like um, the expressions here. I would have been honestly fine with either of these. Of course, this was the one that was chosen, but honestly, if this one was chosen instead, I would have been just as fine. This one, of course, if you're a Tails fan, you probably will like a bit more, as here he is. Really, really moody knuckles there, right? Awesome stuff. All right, so here we have the cover roughs for issue 199, so another reprint um, issue. And this issue featured the reprint story of Voice of the People. And we've got two uh, different covers here, and both covers are depicting the exact same thing happening. However, they're from two totally different angles. So, for those that aren't familiar with this story, this is Sonic either kind of jumping um, from or jumping to a giant Robotnik statue. And this statue is eventually uh, brought down by um, protesters um, in this uh, story. And... Um, What's quite interesting is that this is another one of the issues that kind of merged both of these uh, covers into one. If I show you the final uh, version, here it is. And you can get a much more clearer example that this is actually a statue of Robotnik, whereas this one you could be fooled it thinking it actually is Robotnik. Because obviously no colour. You know, you can see there's all dots that are, you know, depicting this made out of uh, concrete. So it, Sonic's actually literally smashed through Robotnik's mouth, and what what it looks what it looks like Richard's done. In fact, there's some notes here. They're a little bit faded, but they've kept this uh, style of Robotnik here. And what's happened is is that this pose of Sonic has um, it looks like it's been flipped and then put on this cover. It's exactly what's happened. You can see Sonic. The the image has just been flipped. And placed here. Of course, the illustration of Sonic's uh, again much much bigger than this one. This is a much smaller image of um, Robotnik. Uh, sorry, not Robotnik. Sonic. Um, either way, um, I'm fine with this one as well. To be honest with you, I suppose it looks a little bit more. Um, I don't know. I would say a bit more dynamic, maybe with Sonic like smashing through without uh, even looking back at what's happened because this one he's kind of um i mean it was clear he was going to probably be smashing through anyone this cover because there's like a you know you've got like a star symbol here which probably would have shown damage um yeah yeah pretty cool it's a pretty nice cover okay Back to another fan favourite uh, for sure here. Um, here we have cover roughs for 202. Uh, again, this was um, a story, part one of the reprint story of uh, Running Wild. Um, the reason why you might think, how comes Richard Elson didn't do the cover artworks for um, the original run of Running Wild, which was around issue 80, um, Cole Flint was doing the cover arts um, for those at that time. So basically from, um, I'm not sure which issue number it was, but it was um, like the late 60s, early 70s. Like Richard Elson literally was um, the only artist left um, at Sonic the Comic, Fleetway Sonic the Comic then. So he literally did all the covers um, from that, uh, that time slot, which is why all of his cover art, it's all, it's all his art from the later issues especially. But here we have um, two um, very different 
covers for this issue. Now, if you're familiar, uh, again, you'll notice that number two was the one that was chosen. And this is kind of like a before and after, really. But instead, look at it from this point. Number two happens first and then number one happens after because Supersonic emerges from the, um, the Emerald Chamber. As now, you know, Sonic's turned into Supersonic. And I love this illustration of uh, Supersonic here. It is really, um, really badass. Um, of course, number two contains uh, Porker Lewis here. You know, like, oh my God, Sonic, you've fallen down. Sonic's fallen down. You don't actually see this uh, angle of Sonic falling down into the Emerald Chamber when this is happening. You just see him kind of sitting around here because you can see the crumbling and he kind of falls in. Um, I suppose a lot of people would probably have rather have had this cover because, you know, Supersonic's such a fan favourite. But if you're not familiar with this story, I suppose it does give away the surprise of what's going to happen. And when you think that Supersonic is on the cover art for issue 203 and 204 for the Running Wild art, you know, it kind of makes sense why they'd kind of hold off that surprise and keep number two here, is it? But to be honest with you, you know, they're both awesome. I mean, of course, Supersonic is always awesome, and it's always Richard's artwork of him is always spectacular. Basically, I would have been fine with um, either of these two, to be honest with you. And of course, here is the finished version, and it looks really great with all this glowing green all around um, the uh, the bricks here, and it's all crumbling in. You can see all the the, the Master and the Chaos Emeralds. Not much really looks like it's changed from the rough, really. Um, all of the rubble is still here. Of course, like the detail wasn't here of all the bricks around it. That was only added for the finished version. You know, I would again would love to see this finished. Um, like rich for Richard to have finished just this illustration for it to have even popped up in um as a poster or something. Can you imagine that as a poster? That'd just be uh, really really awesome. Um, so yeah. Okay, so here we are at the landmark issue 200 of STC. And um, again, both of these covers are really, really cool. Um, honestly, um, here's the thing I kind of I prefer Sonic's expression here in cover two. Uh, this was the cover art that was chosen, cover one. Okay. So um, here's the, what it looks like finished. I really like the detail of this one, and you've got the candles and obviously all the balloons that say 200. Whereas this one, um, it's awesome as well. Uh, don't get me wrong, I don't not like Sonic's pose. I, li I like this pose. It's just you don't really often see this kind of uh, expression from Sonic here, especially holding a peace sign up and smiling, you know, smiling Sonic. Everyone says Fleetway Sonic's always like grumpy and not, but here's a picture of him smiling for the naysayers. Um, so obviously the biggest probably difference with this one is is that it's got all the other characters on it, which is um, you know makes it overall better. I'd say overall um, you've got Knuckles, Amy, and of course Tails here. This Tails picture is um, or this illustration I should say has uh, uh, come a bit famous with memes over the years because of his kind of smiley, happy, almost little little bit derpy he looks. Um, it's a closer look. You can see. I guess the background's a little bit more simpler with this one as opposed to the rough for the second one. This one looks like it had a lot more colour and stuff with the flames and the balloons and everything. But it has uh, less characters, of course, and that's a really, really big cake Sonic standing on here. And three Chewits there. For those that aren't familiar with Sonic the comic, uh, Chewits, which um, it's like a sweets. Essentially, they were regularly a free gift um, on Sonic the Comic issues because who doesn't love sweets, especially as a kid, right? You know, who doesn't love sweets? So having a pack of sweets with your favourite Sonic comic, it's a win-win, right? So here we are to um, issue a hundred and one. Um, so we've just had the landmark. Uh, issue 100 now we're at 101 and this was kind of like an election special not like that don't think like a political 
election in real life. It was resulting in the um, an election going on in the Sonic world because Robotnik had been defeated because um, he had controlled the planet for the majority of Sonic the Comics run. He'd now been defeated, so it's like, oh, what's going to happen now? And that's what this uh, story kind of um, cleared up. And to be fair, both of these covers are they're really good. Again, I, I really like this expression, this surprise Sonic here. And uh, the names here are the two uh, people that were running to uh, uh, run, essentially, the uh, the planet. So was it Derek Wombat and... I can't pronounce that. I can't see that one clearly. Giles, Barb, and I think that is. It's basically a Wombat and um, a baboon. The chosen one was cover two, however, it does look a bit different. They changed um, like this silhouette here of uh, the individual, and you've got the Who's ruler of the Mobius. This is um, the finished version, so you can kind of see the silhouette is still there, but they didn't um, they didn't keep it like blacked out like this. They kept it kind of red. So in a way, you kind of have to really like squint your eyes to even see out the uh, outlines of this silhouette and I know when I first uh, picked this issue up of course remember I was a lot younger and I didn't even notice there was a silhouette there I thought it was just question marks it was on use your vote but yeah um yeah I'm fine obviously Sonic again as I've said many times he was made much bigger much more prominent on the cover um, yeah, which one of you, of these covers, would you have uh, liked to have seen as the cover, the original, or maybe this one? I'm fine with both, to be honest with you. Okay, back up to um, another reprint issue. We are issue 195, and um, we cover rough one was the one that was chosen, and... Uh, to be fair, I'm going to be honest, I actually prefer the rough for cover two here as opposed to cover one. Again, it's always awesome to see just Sonic on the cover himself, but I really love this one where we've got the bad nicks here coming out, and you've even got Amy here at the bottom here. Um, and he's kind of, um, not sure what to say, a puzzled, slightly puzzled look of Sonic maybe. Really love this pose as well. It's definitely signature Richard Elson pose as well for Sonic with the hands, one behind and one in front. Don't get me wrong, I do like this one as well with the spotlight on Sonic. Um, this is the finished version. You can't really see the spotlight as much now with it finished because, of course, um, again, another packet of chewers here uh, on the left-hand side. Um, the colouring's really great how the the shading and you can see that there's a bright light on Sonic and then his shadows behind him. I do like that. That does look cool. You know, I like them both. I don't think you're probably ever going to hear me say in this video that I, there's a, one of these cover arts I don't like because I don't think I've ever um, come across one of uh, Richard's artworks from Sonic the Comet said I don't like it. They're always awesome. But for me, I probably would have personally have liked to have seen the second one done just because of how this all looks here. So yeah, that is 195. Okay, so here we are at some more production artwork of a character. Now this is actually the Emperor, or Emperor Kodor, of the Draken Empire, the House of War, to be more specific. And these are some of um, Richard's designs of what he was going for and uh, what the Emperor was going to look uh, look like. And um, yeah, I guess you say he changed a little bit from um, these designs. He's kind of, uh, not sure. This middle one here is very much close to what he would end up looking like. He was probably slimmed down a little bit in the waist here. He, he did retain those massive feet, he, he, um, um, as you can see here. They kind of slimmed his waist down a bit. He got a big old cape, and um, these ones at the bottom here is quite interesting. They've it's kind of like he's even smaller, and um, his helmet actually covers his uh, mouth. So this one on the right here, all you can see is his eyes, which is quite an interesting, um, quite an interesting take on the character. I mean, it might look a little bit like Darth Vader, really. So maybe that's why they decided not to go with that one, perhaps. Um, 
this one on the left here, mm, uh, it, it, uh, it's a bit small. I suppose you could say it looks a little bit maybe too much like a baby, perhaps, in this sort of uh, one. Uh, in the end, he had that massive chin, almost like a beard chin sort of thing, but it's not. It's, just, it's not hair, of course. Um, here's the Emperor Kodor that we are all familiar with. Here he is. So you can see, they kind of made him still a little bit shorter. He's, uh, his waist is nowhere near as big as this one, but he certainly retained those feet. And he got longer arms as well. These arms are quite short, but yeah, Kodor's design's pretty cool. Looks like his helmet changed somewhat as opposed to the uh, these parts jutting upwards. They were uh, more like jutting sideways. Yeah, unfortunately, um, Emperor Kodor never got a. Uh, um, he never got his comeuppance. Um, unfortunately, after the Robotnik reigns supreme arc, he was never seen again. So we never know what exactly he, whether he was planning revenge. He was never ultimately defeated by Sonic. He just kind of never saw him again, unfortunately. And I guess as Sonic the comic ended, we never got that resolve of what would have happened between him and the Draken Empire. Definitely an underrated character. He's not one of my favourite, favourite villains, I'm going to say, but he's uh, he's definitely an, an underrated villain in the series. He's, he's, he's quite prominent, especially um, after issue 100. Here we have some more um, roughs of production artwork for some characters. And this is Lou Stringer um, again, as we saw him earlier with his Brutus design. This is actually The Bulk, who appeared... Um, quite close to issue 100 um very much kind of like a, um a parody take on the hulk as i'm pretty sure you can gather you got bob bobble who would transform into the bulk lose notes here you got here it's just roughs to give you an idea redesigned to suit your own style purple um because he would have purple skin they couldn't exactly give him green that would look a bit too similar right but um Richard was, Richard was actually very um, happy to be able to work on this strip because um, the Incredible Hulk is actually one of his favourite uh, superhero uh, characters. So before he started working um, with Marvel and actually drawing like characters like the Hulk, his favourite and um, like the Thing uh, from Fantastic Four, this was his first um, foray into drawing essentially something that was the Hulk close. And of course here is the uh, finished version of the bulk. Um, so he changed a little bit. Obviously, his physique was mostly the same. He got this kind of commando ish, like general, um, not what short to call it, but hairstyle here. And I uh, look bulk smash. You know, it's pretty cool. So, yeah, that is the bulk. Okay, here we have two uh, cover roughs for issue 109 and 110. Um, these are really, really awesome uh, cover roughs. These are obviously the ones that were both chosen, but obviously a much more detail had not yet been added to the finished versions for these. Uh, issue um, 109 here, you've got Emperor Kodor. Really big uh, depiction of him at the back here with Sonic leaping towards and you've got the emperor strikes back obviously a bit of a reference uh well a bit of a call into star wars the empire strikes back but instead it's the emperor it's pretty cool and on this one you've got sonic and metal knuckles metallics duking it out and this is a really really awesome story a really good fight scene between these two uh, in this issue um trial by combat really really cool <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, this is obviously the finished version of uh, issue 109. Oh, gone back a bit too far. And you can see, um, gone forward a bit too much there. Uh, Sonic's actually mirrored and his hands positions. In fact, the whole actual cover's actually been mirrored. Um, just realised because the Emperor's position's there now. So they probably mirrored this to fit the need of um, fitting all the uh, the text uh, bubbles here, getting it in, because if it was here, it would have completely covered uh, Kodor's um, face and all this stuff on the bottom here. 
but the biggest change is definitely Sonic's hands. Yeah, both of them are now open. And of course, Sonic, again, made um, quite big, much more prominent. Looks like the Emperor, well, a little bit of the details of him was cut out, unfortunately, as it was zoomed in. You can only actually see half of his uh, head there. Unfortunately, it's kind of like, you kind of have to look for him, really, because if you've not read the, the issue or you didn't know it, you probably can't even see him there. It could You could just think of it as just the, uh, just just background stuff, really, and it's just Sonic. But yeah, that is indeed Kodor. I have seen the original artwork for this one. I don't own this one, and uh, you get to see all of the details for uh, Kodor, and it looks really, really awesome. Um, of course, the trial by combat. Here it is. Obviously, the, the characters were moved much more into the center. Much, much, much more details added to the, the, the arena around them. I kind of like how um, whoever was putting the text on here decided to put them actually on the uh, the columns here, which is pretty cool. I mean, that that's, that's pretty cool, right? And, um, you know, Metal Knuckles' Metallics, his design is just, uh, it's awesome. Um, it's an interesting thing to note that this character, Metal Knuckles, yeah, this actually predates um, Sonic R. So this was actually kind of like one of the first uh, um, introductions to what Metal Knuckles would be. And uh, it's, a, it's a really awesome design. I, I love his design. So yeah, that is issue 809. Um, yeah, no other real notes on there that it says there. They did keep the em Emperor Strikes Back, which I'm glad they did. As I say there, um, basically Richard puts these little notes on here. These are like his ideas, and sometimes they keep them, sometimes they don't. I guess it all depends on what the editor wants. So, yeah. So, here we go. Issue 98, so we're right into the Doomsday arc now. And here we have three cover roughs for this issue and each one of them's kind of quite different to be honest i suppose two and three are somewhat similar but this one here cover art one you've got lord sidewinder who's blasting off in his rocket ship to head towards the black asteroid as supersonic's about to return so this one actually happens right at the end of the story and here you've got Sonic and Chaotix versus uh, Lightmare, who is Lord Sidewinder's daughter. You get a pretty good shot of the back of her here. And uh, on this one, it's just Sonic versus Lightmare. Although, of course, you get a much more closer, uh, no, not closer, you get a, like a better frontal view of Lightmare. Uh, the, the details, uh, sorry, the notes it says here is this. So it says like they chose cover art to the, the these notes say this, but with a background in 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 smoke. So as you can see here, the smoke was added to cover art two. This is the finished version. And honestly, out of all three of them, they're all awesome. Of course, um, I think they went with the right one though. Definitely, like having Kox on the cover as well. Kox is always uh, great to see. You can see the poses changed quite a lot of the characters. Vector's totally in a different pose in the finished version. He's got one hand there and one hand there. And probably, if you haven't noticed yet, for some reason, uh, Charmy was cut. As you can see here, he was intended to be on the cover right next to Mighty, but he was sadly cut. Not sure why, but sucks to be Charmy, I guess. Um, yeah, otherwise, uh, SBO and Mighty are, um, sorry, I accidentally keep pressing forward sometimes. SBO and Mighty are pretty much in the same end pose, but obviously much, much more details were added for the finished version. It's a very colourful cover. The yellow really does make it pop. Right, here we are at some festive covers, right? Because um, it's only a few months now until Christmas. So they started getting in that mood. So here we have, um, I think this was 93. I'm trying to, 
Okay, wrap my brain around. But yeah, here are the three cover ups we've got for this issue. Um, all three of them are quite different. You got Sonic here, who's holding mistletoe. You've got Sonic here, who's here. Sonic's inviting you uh, for a party. Um, in fact, let me zoom in on that because there's some notes there that I can't read from this angle. So Sonic's inviting you into a party, and you probably, uh, for you STC fans out there, you'll recognise that this was the cover art that was chosen. And number three, we've got Sonic rings a bell, and in the background, you've got snowmen of Robotnik and Grimer, which is pretty funny. I like this scarf Sonic's got on as well. And um, this would have been a pretty interesting cover to see, to be honest. I would have liked to have seen this one. Um, of course, this one was chosen, as I've already said. Um, it's a much, much more uh, basic version of what the finished version was going to be. You've got some of the notes here that say Big Balloon, there's going to be disco lights, and I can't see that. Lights, maybe? And other characters were added here in the background. You can see there's some sort of outlines that there's going to be some stuff here. Um, not sure. What do you What do you guys think? What's your favourite one? Would you like to have seen Sonic holding mistletoe? I guess kind of implying that um, you know. <laughs> Does anyone want to kiss him? I don't know. Maybe that's but the, the, I do like the comical one here of uh, Sonic. They're, they're all awesome. Um, here's actually the finished version, um, the clean version, I should say, without any text on top of it. Obviously, as I've said uh, many times, it zooms drastically in on this cutting a lot of this top bit out and here you've got uh amy tells um let me zoom in on this a bit uh johnny and uh, knuckles as well is there can you believe it knuckles has actually joined them for the party right i use this illustration quite a lot in my videos because i think this is a really great uh, picture of Sonic in like a happy expression. I, I do like this pose of Sonic. It's uh, it's like a really cheerful, happy Sonic. So yeah, there's your free, um, free roughs. Okay, so more Christmas festivities. Uh, cover roughs uh, for one and two. Now I think this might have been the following issue. I haven't got the notes here depicting what this uh, uh, issue was and the next one's not there so this might actually be two completely unfinished covers that I don't recall seeing these popping up anywhere so they're both really awesome I mean maybe these were going to be another two alternatives for the previous issue I'm not sure but it kind of looks like it's quite new year uh, themed the fact that you've got like balloons party and stuff going on and but then it's it's hard to say because this one looks like it's got um and i'm not sure is that father christmas or is that um i don't know because he's got an hourglass here so i'm not entirely sure if that's meant to be him but it kind of looks like him because he's got a big old beard um but here's Sonic like ringing a bell, which I'm I'm guessing would be like ringing the new year. And you've also got Big Ben here, which well, it looks like it's it was meant to be Big Ben. And you've got some very uh, low detail characters here for what was going to be maybe um, some of the other Freedom Fighters. Interesting. Um, out of the two, I gotta say I prefer this one on the left here. I mean Sonic with ice skates, and you've got Amy playing the bagpipes, um, which obviously, uh, as I said, definitely ring in the new year is uh there's bagpipes are quite commonly known for uh, uh ringing in the new year at least uh at least here <laughs> you've got knuckles although he hasn't got all his face done in yet and towels um two very interesting covers i might have to inquire exactly what these ones were meant to be but yeah moving on so here we uh come to honestly one of my favourite cover arts from all of Sonic the Comic. Um, and we've got three different cover arts for issue 97 here. And all three of these are drastically different. All three of them. So you've got Sonic here who's like jumping very fast. He's, and you can see um, all of the poses he's doing as he's making this big jump in the middle. 
uh, and the details here, you know, trapped twin suns on planet Meridian, because this was part one of Doomsday. You've got Toxic Shock, Dr. Plague. Um, that is a G, isn't it? I did question this earlier whether I was saying it right. Dr. Plague, Dr. Plague on the Rampage. And then number three, you've got Screaming Lord Sidewinder. Of course, here's Lord Sidewinder again of all his snakes. Um, honestly, they're all they're all good again, of course. Um, this one's pretty interesting how you've got Dr. Plague here, like, really in the centre here with Sonic, but he doesn't really do much in this issue, so I don't think he really deserved to be on the front cover. Um, in fact, you only see him a little bit before he gets arrested, and then that's it, you never see him again. Um, Sidewinder one's interesting, because as I said, he's, he, he did deserve to be on a cover, but Sonic and him actually don't have no interaction in this issue whatsoever. So, it kind of doesn't make much sense, I suppose. And the snakes, Sonic doesn't even, like, battle his snakes or anything. Cool, cool artwork, but I guess it doesn't really relate too much to the story. At least that's what I think. Um, number one was, of course, the cover art that was chosen, and, um... I absolutely love this this cover. It's definitely my favourite. If not, it's definitely one of my favourites, but um, it's definitely my favourite cover to only feature Sonic. Here's, of course, the finished version. And um, you've got, of course, the two suns at the top here, the Doomsday Text Luminate, and you've got all of these poses of Sonic here. He's, like, spin dashing, and then he starts to do the jump down towards the ground before jumping, before he does this leaping expression. You've got these really awesome detailed um, buildings here from Planet Meridian. And, again, I'm very lucky to own the original artwork for this one, and this will give you a look of just uh, how awesome this one truly looks. I'm going to zoom in on it. And you can see exactly why I like this cover so much. Really love the blue sky here. Um, this is uh, awesome. And I think this one was actually coloured by John M. Burns, actually. But yeah, I, I love this. All these Sonics. Obviously, the... Uh, the the rough of it only has these three Sonics and the rest are kind of like depicted that they were going to be Sonics because there's little circles there. So there you go. So definitely, in my opinion, that was 100% the right cover to go for um, on number, on issue 97. Right, we've, um, we've jutted forward quite a lot right up to the Sonic Adventure arc. And here is, um, this is the one that featured Chaos's encounter with Knuckles in the Emerald Chamber. And you've got this big old uh, head of Sonic here in the background who doesn't have too much to do in this issue. And you can see they were going to have some free stickers on this issue. As it says here, stickers to uh, stickers go somewhere within the dotted line. I'm not sure what that says on Sonic's head there, multi something. Maybe that it was going to be somewhat um, transparent, what maybe? Uh, here is the uh, finished version of it. I really love the colours of this. So yeah, Sonic's got a really, um, really big head here, and you've got Chaos with his showdown with Knuckles. So maybe that's something to do with the colouring of what was going to be on there. But yeah, that's really nice, really nice, um, really nice colours on that one. I don't think much change is really from what I can see on here. It looks like that is exactly what was going to be. It doesn't look like much has changed at all. That is literally it from what I can see. Um, yeah, even the emerald in uh, Chaos is uh, behind uh, Chaos. The water effects on him are awesome. Okay, now this is a very, very interesting one. And um, judging by the notes, this was actually one of Richard Elson's hardest uh, covers to draw for Sonic the Comic. And we're going to get into that um, as we go through the details on this. So this is um, issue 177. So we've just had issue 176, which featured Johnny Johnny's death. So a very, very powerful moment um, in Sonic the Comic. Perhaps the most uh, impactful from the whole of the comic's history. 
its hot entire run. It's a very, uh, you know, seeing a character being killed actually in action as well and seeing it all happen, especially in a Sonic game. So, of course, Cover Rough 2 was the one that was uh, chosen. And you've got Cover Rough 1 here, which is completely different to the second one. And um, it's an interesting one because you've got a lot of characters on this one. Um, and I like it. I really like this uh, expression of Sonic and the pose he's got here. And also having Robotnik on here is really great. Because uh, Robotnik doesn't actually appear on any of the covers for the Sonic Adventure arc at all. So it would have been great to see him. But as I said much earlier in the video, he doesn't really have that much to do with Sonic's story in Sonic Adventure. So in that, um, with that, they definitely went with the right cover, this one being this one. And here's some of the notes that um, uh, Richard wrote here. He's got a bit of a tricky one, this, as the only thing Sonic does in this episode is quit the gang, which is what he does. Essentially, all he does is he quits the Freedom Fighters and you don't see him for the rest of the issue. So he doesn't essentially do nothing. So that's what this, uh, the cover art, uh, rough for two is depicting that Sonic's walking away, you know, Porker, Amy and Tails are like all shocked, like, you know, what's going on, Sonic? You can't do this. You've got the drain here, which would feature like a smiling chaos, happy as uh, Sonic's walking away. Let me zoom in a bit on it. You've got a couple more details here above uh, Amy. Um, and you've got here that the eyes were going to be peeping from underneath, so that was going to be added. Um, the cover rough for one, I really like it, but I guess it doesn't, I don't know, it, as Sonic's quitting the gang, you can kind of see that, you know, Chaos is happy, of course, bad, or he's just completely, you know, he's insane, he's an insane monster, right? Um, Robotnik's, of course, very happy about this, and Grimmer's smiling as well, Rhymer, sorry. But you've also got characters on here that don't even make appearances in this uh, story, which um, I guess that's why it weren't essentially wouldn't have been ideal for this story. Because like you've got you've got the Chaotix crew here, you've got uh, Kintobor, which probably would have been a Kintobor computer. You've got Short Fuse, he doesn't even appear. You've even got Metallics here, and Captain Plunder. I mean, Captain Plunder hadn't even been seen for like. Uh, 60 issues or something at least so excluding reprints so i like it and i like all this stuff but uh, it, i guess it doesn't relate too much to uh what was going on with the story and i think this one's much more impactful to be honest with you i mean let me know what you think do you think um would you like to see this one as the cover up for 177 again i've said it many times this would have been great to have seen this just as a poster having all these characters and it's interesting that there was a reprint um one of the reprint stories about 20 issues after this um, featured a cover that was sort of similar to this because you had the characters heads all in the background here you didn't have all of these you didn't have like a uh, chaos or knuckles but you did have classic robotnik and it was featured around the uh, return of chaotic storyline which featured the brotherhood of metallics and their journey traveling back in time to uh, alter history so they could rule it so it's just, it's like this cover wasn't entirely scrapped it was just uh bits of it were taken to be reused on a later cover art here's of course the finished version of it and you can see yeah it's it's a really awesome cover sonic's made bigger again as of course you can see much more impactful here you've got really awesome details here at the buildings the buildings and all this looks awesome and you've got chaos here coming out of the drain looking at sonic and smiling because he's quitting and you know the, you know chaos has just murdered johnny so you know he's 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 loving this right now he's loving what he's seeing definitely uh a very very good uh good issue and the characters don't look like they've changed too much it looks like they're pretty much uh same even this little uh sign here was kept in you've got the uh the hydrant there as well awesome stuff okay moving on to issue 182 this is a this is another interesting one um 
cover art rough 2 was the one that was chosen although it's slightly a little bit different compared to what we see here and cover rough 1 features sonic inside chaos which is which is what happens in the story because he gets trapped inside him before uh, Tikal and her father uh, transport him back to the present time where he uh, yeah he, he transports back into the current time in Robotnik's fortress where they are prepared to have the final showdown with Chaos. Um, as great as it is to see Chaos on another cover, I gotta admit I kind of do prefer this one, where Sonic's just blasting back through into the uh, present time, and you kind of don't see this instance of how Sonic travels through the the time barrier so it's kind of like the covers showing you an extra panel that you don't see in the strip uh this one's pretty cool and you can see it was definitely clearly designed to the the the, the text and everything was going to go here and the barcode because all this is left blank and chaos is drawn over here um but i i, I do prefer the second one on this um some of the changes that were made to it is that Sonic's eyes are actually open in this cover. It actually says here the eyes were going to be open. Some contrast was going to be added. I mean, this is what the finished version uh, looks like. So it does look quite different, in fact. You know, just having Sonic's eyes open makes a, a lot of difference um, to the depiction of what Sonic looks like here. Otherwise, looks about the same. You know, mouth and hand positions are all the same. It's only the biggest change, but it would have been it would have been quite interesting to see how this one would have looked. But I think, uh, yeah, that was definitely the better one. It, it looks very like impactful, and you got the title here: Sonic Boom. The Blue Bomber blasts back to the future. Okay, so here we are at issue 185. This was the very first reprint issue for Sonic the Comic. And um, we've got two covers with the same characters, but doing completely different poses. And I honestly really like both. Honestly, I know I keep saying that, but it's true. This is Cover Rough 2 was the one that was chosen. It's even got a tick there saying that's the one it was going to be as the heroes of Mobius are jumping towards you, whereas this one's kind of depicting that their their Sonic's pointing as if, like, you know, forward to the future. Um, I do like the inclusion of the birds here in the background, but maybe it was a little bit distracting to the cover, which is why they maybe went with this one, because they wanted the cover to be, you know, centred around these three guys, the Sonic Heroes trio, right? Um, here is, of course, the finished version. Here comes the heroes of Mobius. Um, really awesome stuff. Um, it looks like the poses were only changed slightly. Knuckles' mouth is open in the finished version. It's not there. And um, Yeah, that's pretty much it. All the smoke's there and they're leaping towards you. I really like it. It's like they're leaping out of the cover uh, towards you. But again, I would have been just as happy with cover rough one being chosen. I'm, I'm pretty sure uh, most of you guys would probably agree with that. that they're both awesome. Your father was chosen and they both uh, really suit what was going to happen with the story, which I believe was Project Brutus part one. I believe this story had. Okay, here we have the cover roughs of issue 189 and 190. So these are both covers that were chosen. Both really, really cool covers. I, I, I do like 189 with Sonic there looking really badass. And then you've got Chaotix all around him. You know, they're ready, they're ready to sort out what they need to sort out. You've got Vector like pointing towards leading the Chaotix forward. Serious Mighty, you know, SBO here. You've got Charmy. Um, flying around them and forward and on this one you've got Sonic versus the uh, Metallics version of Porker Lewis. Pretty awesome to see him actually get an appearance on the, the as a cover art because he's only a one ear one um, at least in this form he's like a one issue character I mean technically he does appear in the previous issue but he's still impersonating Porker Lewis um, so it's pretty rare really to see a one 
a one issue character appear on a front cover but it's pretty good that we got to see him I mean admittedly I think a character I think probably the most deserved character from all of Sonic the Comet that deserved to be on a front cover was the Emperor Metallics uh, he only got one cover art appearance, and that was uh, Carl Flynn. And Carl Flynn did a great job of him, but he really deserved to have had a Richard Elson style uh, appearance on one of the covers. He really did. He really did. I mean, if Porker, Porker Metallics can make an appearance on there, then, you know, surely the Emperor can. You got uh, the Miracle Planet. It's either the Miracle Planet or Mobius. They're heading to one of the two in this location. He's, of course, the finished version of 189. Really, really great stuff. Not much to change. Mighty's mouth was changed open. Yeah, really cool. And here's, of course, here's of course, the other. Destroy Sonic. Okay, so this, uh, this was Mobius in the background here because, of course, they're on top of... Uh, the Miracle Planet, which has now all been turned uh, metal. So um, you couldn't really tell that from the, the rough because the details hadn't been drawn in yet. Okay, moving on. Here we have the cover roughs. Um, these are really two awesome covers as well. Um, I know a lot of people, uh, a lot of people do love Metal Sonic, so for the Metal Sonic fans, they will definitely love these covers. So we've got the cover roughs for issue 191 and 194. And you've got here, Trapped in a World That He Never Made, which is true. Uh, stickers uh, looked like they were going to be on this issue, if I recall. But Richard put a lot of detail in this one, uh, in the background. And I love all these Metal Sonics, Metallics, as you've got all around him here. You've got one coming out uh, from the corner here. You've got two behind him. And of course, here we have issue 194, and this one features Sonic and a lot of uh, Metallics's. And Richard has told me this is actually one of his favourite front covers that he did, and uh, it's pretty awesome as well. I got to admit, you of course got uh, a lot of circles around here, which was going to be uh, more Metallics heads uh, added because this was the ultimatum issue of the Return of Chaotix Part Six, which featured the uh, you know the reprint story of it, of course. Um, with Sonic and his final battle against uh, Emperor Metallics and his army of Metallicses. So both, honestly, I really love both these cover arts. Um, here's the finished version of uh, 191. Again, the, the details are just, just, I love it. It's just awesome. And here is 194. Unfortunately, this kind of uh, this competition here kind of takes away a bit of the cover, really, for me. I really wish this weren't on here. Um, but yeah, this is uh, I, I love this. You've got a big uh, metallics here. He's actually kind of covered quite a lot um, by the title. Well, he's not any bigger. It's just uh, he's closer to where the the drawings depicting him. And you've got Sonic battling these uh, Metallicses. Um, it kind of looks like there was going to be intended for more to be on here, to be honest, because you've got lots more uh, heads that were going to be on here, maybe all drawn in. Um, either maybe Richard decided against it or maybe didn't get time. Either way, it, it uh, really looks on. Really love this really angry, serious expression here. He knows, like, it's, you know, serious stuff's going on here. He's got he's to get rid of these Metallicses. And here is the um, original artwork for this issue. Now, this looks awesome because you can see so much more detail of the metallics without any of the text and titles in the way. I'm going to zoom in to show you. But you get a much, much clearer shot of this top one here. You don't see his head. You just get a little bit of a line here, but you can see much the back shot of his booster, all the hands, and the detail of all the others. You don't even see the, this one really at all in the cover. The, you can get a really good shot of his head there. Yeah, that's cool. And then you've got the metallics with uh, yeah, his clenched fists. I don't think you can even see that in the, the cover. In fact, let's zoom out a bit and go back. Now, you can't even see his fist clenched there. And this one's literally half of his head's cut off. So it's really great to see um, how this looks in the uh, original artwork, showing you all this extra stuff. Um, yeah, love this cover. 
Okay, here we are at issue 175, and this is part one of the Sonic Adventure adaptation. Uh, the Sonic Adventure adaptation was a 10 part story. And cover rough one was the one that was chosen. Um, these are two, again, very drastically different covers ideas for what was going to happen. Um, this was, I guess, cover rough two was kind of depicting of things that was going to happen. Sonic's, of course, about to battle chaos, or he's just come out of him or hit him because you've got all of the, the the water here, and you've got this very sinister chaos face here. I like it. I like it a lot. Um, Sonic's definitely very serious. Um, whether this is where he's just come out of chaos and he's just about to transform into modern Sonic, not entirely sure. Probably not. They're probably not going to give that away in the uh, the cover. Um, some notes here saying the reflection of the monster's face in the liquid. I mean, Chaos's face looks very sinister here. Um, I like both covers. I would have been happy with either of them. I, I like this one as well because it's got uh, all of the characters on it. And it, I suppose it's good to see Johnny Lightfoot on a cover as well, to be honest, especially when, um, you know, he was about to be murdered in the next issue. So it's good for him to get one last, uh, one last uh, appearance alive. Of course, he does make some appearances on the reprint covers, but it's not the same, is it? Because they're like in the past. Is of course the finished design. So not much changed by the looks of it. Uh, Tails' position was moved much lower down. It was actually quite in between the the legs here of Sonic, as you can see. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, Johnny Lightfoot looks like he actually was made um, a bit a bit more bigger, I'd say. Um, yeah, you got Amy Porker. Yeah, I'm, uh, I, I like both covers. It would have been interesting to see this one. Because it's kind of like a mystery. If you'd not seen this story before, you'd seen it like, wow, what's going on here? Especially if you was playing Sonic Adventure at the time. You'd have been, you know, like, who's this guy that, you know, that's, that's looking at Sonic? This looks pretty serious. Okay, here we have the cover roughs of 100, issue 187 and 188. So we're now back into the reprint um, cover arts. This is, of course, from the reprint story, the, uh, Project Brutus, one of my favourite stories from Sonic the Comic. One of my top two stories from Lou Stringer. So, issue 187, this was uh, part i believe it was yes it must have been because the, they'd all been catching and defeated by brutus and put in chains I like how it says chain gang there chewits of course were going to be free gift again as you can see it was depicted there and issue 188 cover i love this cover this is awesome you've got supersonic and commander brutus duking it out and this was a huge really awesome um fight scene between these two i um, love this fight scene it was literally an entire fight scene throughout the whole issue for the most part Here's, of course, the finished version of um, 187. Uh, Sonic and Amy looks like they've remained unchanged. However, Johnny Johnny's expression was changed quite a lot. It looks like he was kind of looking down at the chains in this uh, in this rough, whereas here he was changed uh, changed to looking forward. You know, Amy and Johnny are surprised. They've just been defeated and captured by Brutus. And you know, Sonic's obviously really angry because, you know, he's just been beaten and he's Sonic the Hedgehog, right? And here is, of course, the cover artwork for the other. And as you can see, 188. Uh, really, really awesome cover. This is, that, that is an awesome cover. you got Super Sonic taking a big punch to Commander Brutus there. You can see danger alert when Sonic blows a fuse. There can only be there can be only extraordinary outcome. Supersonic. That's awesome. 
And there you go, the rough one more time. Just love that the whole issue, like Brutus's cape is like, it's depicted as being huge, and it is huge. <laughs> it literally takes up the whole cover as he's being smacked forward. So, some more festive um, artwork for you guys. This is the cover roughs for issue 197. And um, they're both really awesome. Um, there's actually, looking at this, there's actually, because I've got two different ones here, there was actually technically four roughs for this issue, but they both are kind of the same-ish. They've just had some slight alterations between both of them. So there's four basically based off two. This is what the finished version was chosen. So it's essentially the first one here, cover rough one. And I'm going to be honest, I actually prefer the second rough for this one. Um, don't get me wrong, I like this one. It's pretty cool to see Sonic, uh, you know, basically replacing one of the reindeers and you know, leading Father Christmas um, along, or Santa Claus for you folks over in America, as you call him. You know, he's over across the Emerald Hill Zone. You know it's the Emerald Hill Zone because these are like the, 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 the shapes of the houses are in the Emerald Hill Zone. But I really like this one because this is like a really like humble, uh, humble uh, Sonic holding a present here. It's like, um, let me zoom in on that a little bit more. You know, dear, dear reader, Merry Xmas from Sonic. So, you now Sonic's handing you a present here and he's pretty happy about it. I mean, look how cool and happy Sonic looks giving you a present. And also, like, You've got Knuckles here holding a present, right? <laughs> How cool does that look? It's, it looks pretty funny as well. And you've got Tails and Amy here, of course. Um, the rough versions of the second one looks like they changed the poses somewhat. If you look at the rough of number one here, and then if I go back, you can see that like the expressions were changed. More details in the backgrounds, of course. But Sonic's kind of looking at you the reader in this one whereas this one he's kind of looking forward and uh, father christmas is a bit smaller in this one uh the rough for the second one i think doesn't look much different other than some more details uh on the well it actually looks like sonic's feet might be in a slightly different position um Towers' expressions somewhat changed. Um, otherwise, like I, I like both, both, both great that they were chosen. But I think honestly, I slightly prefer the second one a bit more, and I would have liked to have seen that one instead. But they're both cool. Here's of course again the finished version. Super Sonic Santa, four festive adventures inside. So you can kind of actually see they. More detail, you could get a better shot at some of the back spikes of Sonic because it's such a um, such an interesting angle having him like this because he's his head's further out than the body, so the body obviously looks smaller here. The feet, as you can see, as it's getting further away from you. So the extra details on the spikes uh, was added that you could see them. It's pretty cool. Okay. Here we have the cover roughs for issue 192 and 193. So we're right into the Return of Chaotix um, story arc at this point. So Sonic and Chaotix versus the Brotherhood of Metallics. As it's both of these ones were the ones that were the chosen final versions. We've got Back from the Future, obviously a bit of a reference there to Back to the Future, which is pretty cool because both Sonic and the Chaotix were returning from the past in this issue. Always great to see a Chaotix on a cover. You know, they they were really awesome and interesting characters in Sonic the Comic. You know, coming out of the Omni Viewer. And here's 193. Now, remember when I said about um, uh, the Sonic Adventure uh, cover rough, where you had characters' heads dotted around here? You can kind of see that this is kind of um, a little bit where elements were taken from it because here it looks very similar in, in a way you've got obviously some different characters you've got kinder ball here you know vector charmy classic robotnik you've got brown the original brown sonic sbo and then sonic you know, 
he looks quite hurt as he's been jutted towards uh, jutting towards you in this illustration. Um, this one showed you the origin of how Sonic became blue, and he's very famous. Uh, 747 miles per hour uh, uh, speed that he obtains as he, uh, well, it, in this story, you know, Brown Sonic's running on that treadmill. It blows up. All of the energy infuses into him, and then he he transforms from brown to blue. Very cool to see classic Robotnik, especially Richard Elson's design on a cover. And I believe this is actually the only time the Kinterbor appears on the cover of an issue of Sonic the Comic. Technically, the Kinterbor computer Badnik appears on a cover. Um, quite early, well, not early on. It was in I can't remember the issue number now. Where Sonic battles the Kinterbor computer in a Badnik. It shows you the Badnik, and there's a, like a TV monitor on the front of this Badnik, which reveals Kinterbor's face. Uh, but it's the Kinterbor computer essentially. Um, but the cover doesn't actually show Kinterbor's face on it. So this is issue 193 is actually the only issue that features um, Kinterbor on a cover art. Here's, of course, the finished versions. I don't think much was changed, really. That looks like that's pretty much all there. Uh, all the characters look like they're in the same sort of poses, maybe slightly tweaked a little bit. Really cool. And, of course, here's the finished version of 193. Doesn't look like much has changed. Robotnik kind of got given some eyes here which is quite interesting because um his eyes were mostly depicted at least in his classic form as just being completely soulless black here he's kind of got some eyes a little bit of like a pupil here again awesome to see uh brown sonic um very rarely did you see him in Sonic the Comics, so it was great to see him appear. Um, honestly, if Sonic the Comic had continued, it would have been really awesome to see some of Sonic's adventures while he was in his original form. I would love to have seen that. Imagine if they did some like Blast of the Past stories where it shows you like maybe a year or two before he meets Kinterbor, and then he's on his own adventures. Obviously, Robotnik doesn't even exist then. And he hasn't met any of the other characters like uh, uh, Tao's Amy and the others. Or maybe even just to show us some of the stories but when he was with Kinterbor. That would have been great because Kinterbor becomes one of his uh, best friends before he even meets Tao's. Okay, we're back to the um, Sonic Adventure arc now. And here we have the cover roughs for issue 181. And it's quite interesting because both of these cover ups weren't actually chosen at all. Some of the illustrations were um, slightly reused in the strip itself, especially this one where the uh, the, the Draken Empire um, smashes into uh, where Amy and Tikal are. And Sonic's like well shocked, and so is Tikal. And then you've got this one with Sonic battling the Draken Sentinels. But it, when in when in fact. Um, Cover art for issue 181 was this one, which showed Sonic, um, you know, angrily looking at the Draken Prosecutor, who was uh, the one who was uh, quite centred in this uh, this issue. I like it. It, it kind of makes the, the Drakens seem like quite a threat once again, because whenever the Drakens appeared, they, they were always taken very seriously and um, very well respected by... Um, Nigel Kitchen, he never made them come off as jokes. They were always a serious threat whenever they appeared. Um, it's quite interesting how these two weren't chose. You know, Takal was a great character in it. It would have been, obviously, if Sonic the Comic had continued, it would have been great to see uh, her be used more in future issues. But yeah, once again, this time we've got a win a chew it goodie bag. So not chew it this time, but a goodie bag. So here we have 
probably one of the most important issues of Sonic the Comic, issue 184, the cover roughs for it. Now, why do I say most important? Because this was actually the final issue of Sonic the Comic that featured the final new story. Everything after this was just reprints or non-canon material. Um, very awesome cover. Of course, cover rough two was the one that was chosen as the finished uh, final version. Um, cover rough one is really awesome as well. You've of course got Supersonic, you know, using these eye beams to hit Sonic, and all the others are getting hurt by it as well. You've got Tails here, and Knuckles getting jutted off towards. It's kind of like a before and after, really. Um, I said that um, earlier in this video with one of the cover roughs. Yeah, you could say like this hap this just happened, and then now they're all on the floor like, unconscious. Um, I like cover rough one. I like it a lot. As always, it's always great to see Supersonic, but honestly, definitely the second one. I think. Um, is better. It's it's more impactful, I think, because all the characters are defeated, and you've got like supersonic, you know, shouting out. You know, he's he's done the deed. There was some slight changes to the finished version of Cover Up, which I'm gonna show you. Here's of course the finished version of this uh, issue. Really, really awesome stuff. Um, the one thing that if you haven't noticed it already. Can you notice the big difference between the rough and the finish? Well, this is of course Tails here at the bottom. And Tails is actually removed and replaced with Amy. And there's actually a character at the top here. I'm not sure who that is. Maybe that was actually supposed to be Amy up here unconscious. But that character is actually completely removed. So we don't actually know where Tails is on this cover art. But otherwise, mostly everything's the same. Sonic, Super Sonic, and Knuckles look about the same. Obviously, without all the details put in yet. Really, really awesome cover art. Very powerful one too. You know, it's just um, yeah, really, really awesome stuff. Okay, so here we are at uh, honestly one of my favorite um not only issues from sonic the comic obviously one of my favorite stories this is actually one of my favorite covers um from all of sonic the comic and um definitely my favorite cover to feature both uh, sonic and robotnik so these are the two cover roughs for issue 174 and this would be the strip game over part two which, um, as I said um, a little bit earlier in the video, this video is um, what I consider the final uh, confrontation between um, Sonic and Robotnik in Sonic the Comic. And we've got two um, quite sort of similar covers, I'm going to say. Um, cover Rough 2 was the one that was chosen. And honestly, I'm very uh, glad that they went with the second one. Um, don't get me wrong, I really, really do like the first one as well, but I think the second one is so much uh, better suited for this story and the characters. Um, I mean, let's look at cover rough one um, to start with. Um, you've of course got Robotnik shooting Sonic with a blast from his hand. Robotnik's actually still attached uh, to the machinery that was attached to him, that's literally the Plax's machine that's uh, siphoning the planet Mobius's energy uh, into him, giving him supreme powers. And you've also got um, Short Fuse, who had recently just been attacked in this strip. So this uh, scene is like literally uh, shown to be taken just after this scene, after Short Fuse was attacked. And you've got Amy and Techno like coming to Short Fuse's aid. While well, all this like ex you know carnage is going on. And this is great, honestly, it's great. However, I think as this story itself uh, was literally the last confrontation and battle between Sonic and Robotnik, I think I only really needed to contain those two characters. And this image here of the muscular Robotnik, he is still muscular in this picture here. You can see it still, but he's uh, you, you can't really see it as much because you've got all this destruction going around. Whereas this one, the two... Uh, like literally battling Robotnik is punching Sonic hard here. Sonic's hurting right here. And you've got Planet Mobius literally dying around them. Like the ecosystem is completely collapsing. Um it it, it um 
to me, this this one here completely shows how high the stakes are um, for Sonic. Um, as in, they're both they're both really awesome. It's always great, as I've said many times, to have Robotnik on the cover with Sonic. But really, really glad they went with the second one on this one. It just um, for me, it does a much better job of um, showing what was uh, sh- sh- telling the story um, of what was going to be inside. And of course, here is the finished version. Um, the the cover zooms in a little bit. You don't really see it as much as uh, Robotnik's legs here. You can see how muscular they really are there in the rough. Um, unfortunately, I don't have the original to show you guys um, of this one because that would have been really awesome to see some of the details that have unfortunately cut it off with the uh, cover being zoomed in like this. Um, it would have been great to see like all this destruction going all around here and more of Robotnik's um, very impressive physique. But yeah, awesome, awesome cover art from man. A really, really awesome story. Okay, here we have jumped to uh, issue 197. Um, two very different covers here. Um, it, this one, uh, cover rough one, is the one that was chosen, and this actually features the bulk once again. He's making an appearance because this was the reprint story of uh, from that issue. And um, there's a little bit of a smudge in there of some of the ink. There's a couple actually on here. Um, so this depicts more so what was going on in the story in here. You've got ringing the new year here. You've got a really surprised Sonic with the Chaotix around him, because this is a time when Sonic was in the special zone. Whereas Cover Rough 2's uh, very much a more basic, just a happy party Sonic um, with party time and the new year balloons of 2001. I mean, 2001, can you believe it? It's like 19 years ago. Um, they went with the uh, cover art one, clearly, you, you probably already know that, um, if you've watched uh, my Sonic the Comic videos. Um, definitely a better one, as I've said before, it's great to see Cha- Chaotix on a, a cover, and as this one doesn't really have anything to do with uh, anything to do with the story at all, it's just kind of like a New Year's celebration one. Um, yeah, I'm definitely uh, glad they went with this one for 197. Here's, of course, the finished version, without any of the smudgings around uh, Sonic there. You've got SBO crawling up the uh, the building there at the back. Um, it's quite interesting. They actually changed it here. SBO was actually going to be down here. But maybe because, the, as I've said many times, as the cover zooms in when they print this to go on the comics, he probably would have been completely cut out. As you can see, they kind of made uh, Charmy a little bit smaller, just so he'd fit there. And instead of having SVO here, he was actually placed with there. Vector's in pretty much the same location, and Sonic doesn't really look much different. Except with the fact that his hand uh, was um, added to the back part here, you can see. Okay, so we've got this one now. Again, two very drastically different cover arts from uh, the issue. And this was actually issue um, 167. Just needed to check that, just in case I got it wrong. So as you've already just seen, cover rough one was the one that was chosen. And cover rough two very much. Um, these are obviously based around Halloween. You've probably already got that because, you know, pumpkins. And this is, uh, this one very much looks like a... Uh, Halloween scent centered. You can kind of tell from this one as well. Obviously, this is the uh, finished version. I mean, this issue came out on the 20th of October, right on the hills of Halloween. And I like both uh, both covers. Um, kind of a little bit of uh, reminiscence here of the later one, uh, Rough, they used for the Sonic Adventure, where you had uh, Chaos's face uh, in the puddle. It's a little bit like that in a way. And again, this one wasn't chosen either. Um, I think they went with the right one, honestly. I like both. It would have been great to see what this one would have looked like fi- uh, finalised because there would have been obviously much more detail uh, in the face here. Uh, I mean, when you see the uh, the bad guy here in the back here with Sonic, you can see that a lot more details was added. In fact, I'm going to zoom in to show you. A lot more detail was added into him and all of like his bomb, pumpkin bombs that are around him. Really, really awesome. Sonic, um, 
not much change really with Sonic. He looks uh, maybe a little bit angrier maybe in the final version. Uh, but love this uh, striking contrast of the colours here that are going around him. And as uh, expected again, this issue did contain also a free pack of chewits. Okay, so here we have um, actually quite a popular uh, story from Sonic the Comic. Um, quite a popular one for just actually a complete story in one issue. And this was where Sonic and Amy uh, went to visit... Um, an alternate reality of their own planet, like a mirror zone of planet Mobius. And in this world, um, Sonic's actually the bad guy and Dr. Robotnik uh, never existed. During the uh, explosion of uh, when Sonic um, obtained his powers and he's called Blue, he was actually the one that became evil. And um, here we have the two cover roughs for that issue. And both... Um, both covers are depicting the exact same thing that's happening with um, the evil Sonic punching the Sonic we all know and love. However, they're from two completely different angles. Um, you've got fireworks and explosions going off in the, the background here. And it looks like they're both going off uh, really um, in the other one as well. Um, cover rough one was the one that was chosen. Um, however, this illustration here of uh, Evil Sonic punching Sonic was kind of used in the strip itself. You might recognize it a bit. Um, I actually have the clean um, un-text uh, version of uh, this uh, cover art and it looks really awesome. Here it is. Just look at how great the coloring looks on this one with all the fireworks and everything going off in the background. Because um, this uh, story takes place um, around Bonfire Night, or you know November fifth, um, for us um, for us uh, people uh, outside of the United Kingdom, when most people often have uh, firework displays and parties. And here we have uh, you know Evil Sonic smacking Sonic right here. Um, it doesn't look like much changes too much between the rough and the final version. However, Sonic has uh, Sonic's mouth is now visible on the finished version that was added here. Whereas on the rough, it might be depicted that it's out of sight. Um, otherwise, I can't see too much difference really, other than obviously the much more detailed background. But yeah, really, really love the colours on this one. Um, this one was actually coloured by um, John M. Burns. I believe this one was one of his colours. Yeah, I'm pretty certain this was. Okay, so we are back at the Game Over arc again. And this is the, um, the cover-ups for... Let me just check on the final version, so I'm not wrong. 172. And this one uh, was where Sonic and the other Freedom Fighters visit Earth again. Although it was only a very brief visit where they go to Easter Island and battle the Easter Island heads. And both covers are quite similar, except the second one, Sonic, is being attacked. And there is a second Easter Island head here behind this one. Um... You know, they do attack Sonic in this story, so both are very accurate to what is going to be depicting in the story. Uh, both are fine, to be honest with you. Um, I, I honestly would have, I don't mind either of them. Um, of course, this was the one that was chosen, cover rough one. I guess it just depends on um, whether you prefer seeing Sonic um, standing here or um, getting hurt, I guess, by the East Island heads. Um, but yeah, both are cool. Here's. Um, Here's a good look at the finished version. Let's rock. Very nice. Okay, now we've moved um, back on to uh, the cover-ups for issue 102, I believe this one was. And we've got two um, very different uh, cover depictions here of what Sonic's going through. Um, this was uh, this issue was based um, story itself over Sonic encountering extreme cases of weather. So you can see him um, in like a tornado twister here, and here he is like running from hailstones. 
literally massive ones. And Cover Rough 1 was the one that was chosen. However, it was still changed somewhat. Uh, the, the Tornado Twister part is the same, however Sonic's face was changed quite a lot. This illustration of Sonic running in um, the Howl Stones was added into um, this story. Um, go check out the issue and you will see uh, at least its similarish uh, image popping up in there. And there's a couple of notes on this one. Um, no paper, that says there, so I guess they didn't want the... Uh, the paper parts here lying around. Um, here is the finished version. Uh, it was 102. And you can see Sonic's face is now, his eyes are open and he's in a, uh, he's like his mouth's uh, wide open in a very surprised, shocked uh, manner. As you can see here, it's more closed, uh, not more closed. Um, his eyes are completely shut and his mouth is in a somewhat different position. Otherwise, he's about the same. Everything else is the same. Um, I do have the original um, original to show you on this one. And you can't really see much of the detail here of the buildings and everything because it's been cut off. But here's the original. And you can see just how much more detail was added here at the bottom here. All these buildings, the tops of them and everything. It's incredible. All the lighting effects, um, the, the, you know, the, the tornado itself, the lightning. Um, it looks incredible. When you think you don't even see half this stuff, when like that's what the issue cover itself looks like. Uh, what you actually see is cut out, and that's that's the finished version. You know, really, really awesome. Um, but in terms of like what cover I prefer, um, I think I'd say fine. Uh, both are fine uh, with this one, to be honest. Maybe the one that was chosen slightly just a little bit better, but this one's pretty cool too because I'm sure Richard would have put a load of uh, stuff maybe in the background. But then this one does have all the buildings here at the bottom which look really detailed and awesome. So maybe Cover Rough 1 was the definitely the best one to go with. Okay, here we have... Um, Another Halloween themed uh, issue, and this is issue um, 89. So we've gone back a little bit, and um, as I've already just shown you, Cover Rough 1 was the one that was chosen. However, part of me kind of wishes they'd gone with Cover uh, 2 for this one, just for the fact of how funny it looks. So let's talk about the one that was chosen first of all. You've got Sonic on a broomstick and he's flying towards, he's pretty happy, and you've got all these pumpkins here, you've got Spooky House in the background, you've got some bats flying around. Um, yeah, it looks pretty cool. It is cool. Sonic looks cool as well as everything. Now this one here, it kind of looks like um, all the characters are having a bit of fun, right? You've got Sonic on a broomstick as well, however he's, he's um, smaller because um, he's, the camera's panned uh, a bit further outwards. Um, and he's looking down, and you've got Knuckles here, and I mean Knuckles on a broomstick, I mean, he kind of looks furious. I don't know whether he's angry because he's on a broomstick, or like, Sonic's done something, he's like made fun of him or something. But Knuckles looks furious, and that's just hilarious. You got Amy here, who, who just this like she's just having fun, and then you've also got Robotnik on a broomstick as well. It kind of looks like he's chasing them, and uh, I really, really would have loved to have seen this cover. It just would have been hilarious to see. Obviously, obviously, you can see they're in a graveyard, so maybe that might have been a little bit off-putting, maybe for the editors who have chosen this one, because you've got tombstones here and like graves that you've got the crosses, but. They could have changed and edited that around. You'd have had the moon there as well, as you can see, Richard. And it looks like maybe um, some clouds up here in the darkness. Um, both are, f are great, to be honest with you. But yeah, I, I think personally, for amusement's sake, I would have loved to have seen this one done. And here's a closer look at the finalised version. And just look how much detail Richard has put into the house and the pumpkins. Like each pumpkin is just so detailed. You've got this really sinister red background. Really reminds you of Pumpkin Hill, right, from Sonic Adventure 2. And you've got to think this predated Sonic Adventure 2 by, um, by about five years. 96, that says there, yeah. So, pretty cool. Halloween is quite soon upon us as well. So, let's get, let's get ourselves in that uh, spooky spirit. 
Okay, now we've gone to issue 125, and this is quite an important uh, cover um, for not only just the story itself and the issue number, because it's issue 125, right? That's quite a landmark number. But this was the first ever piece of digital Sonic artwork that Richard Elson uh, did for Sonic the comic. So it's quite an important one because this is when the shift was moving to digital colouring as opposed to hand painted. So this is a very much rough version of what was going to happen. Sonic with the uh, Master Emerald here and you've got Knuckles and Towers. Diamond Geezers, I quite like that. So you've got a couple of notes here saying some stuff was going to just be moved around a little bit. Towers panicking, I like that. You see that's pretty funny, right? <laughs> With um, I think that says with towels spinning, so it's going to be changed. So you can see here he's not spinning his towels, but they were they are I'm sorry going to be changed to spinning. Here's of course the finished version, and as you can see now, towels is now like shocked, panicked, and his towels are spinning. So this is a really really nice cover, and as I said, very important because this was the very first uh, digitalized colored piece of um, Sonic the Comic artwork. Although the issue that came out before this, which featured the story House on the Hill, which was digitally colored by Richard Elson as well, this one was actually colored before that strip was colored, even though it's um, this issue come out before the other one. I know it's a little bit, I'm, I'm trying to make it sound as clear as I possibly can because it sounds a bit confusing, but yeah. Um, I have the original to show you this one and it's awesome. So this is actually, um, as you can see, it's obviously all black and white because this would have been scanned in onto a computer and colored digitally. And just look how much more detail is on here. It's absolutely awesome. Well, obviously it's cut so much off. I mean, towels is even cut off here quite a bit as well. Obviously these croppings that I've got from the internet anyway, um, or, I've either, or I've either scanned myself, they've kind of cropped off a little bit anyway. A little bit extra but it's not too much whereas yeah you can see all the details here of all the pipes look you've got leaking out of them here the bright light behind them and the, the master emerald see how sharp it is it's a really really nice cover and um yeah i'm really really happy to own this one love sonic's uh sonic's face here it's just a great cover with uh our trio So we've moved up to a uh, Christmas issue again now. I think this is issue 160 something. Let me go to the finish. Nope, sorry, I'm a little bit too far ahead. Issue 145. Now, what's interesting is that these two are the two cover-ups, but neither of these were chosen. And I don't think I actually own the rough version of the finished cover for issue 145. As I've just shown you, this is the uh, finished uh, version of the cover. So this was when some kids uh, rebuilt a bad neck to try to lure Sonic to them because they're such big fans of Sonic and they wanted to see him in action. And that's what's going on here. Sonic's battling this uh, this big old robot. Um, these two are scenes that happen within it. This is when the robot's destroyed. You can clearly see there all this explosion going on. And this is when Sonic's about to confront and battle the, the bad neck robot. I, I don't know whether you use the word badnik or not, because there's no animal inside this guy, so technically he's more like a, a robot. And here are the kids behind him that are like all shocked and like in awe of Sonic about to battle him. Both are pretty cool, to be honest with you. Um, here's obviously the finished one with the robot uh, attacking Sonic, and Sonic's quite hurt. Uh, I can kind of see why they didn't go with Rough One. Not really much to go by with this one, perhaps. I mean, Sonic looks cool in that expression, but this one's pretty cool. I like the second one. Um, it would have been good to see the kids there, uh, you know, about to see Sonic in action, but I can kind of see why um, this one was, this was the one they went for. It's the one that gives us our best look at this robot as well, because you're picking this issue up and you're thinking, like, oh, who's this guy that Sonic's got to face? Um, Christmas fear, I like that. And look, Sonic's uh, Child's Play, obviously, like referencing the horror film Child's Play. So, yeah. 
Okay, so here is a cover rough of um, a cover artwork you are probably all very familiar with because I used this in the intro and outro of my videos and I have done for a long time now. And even my cover artwork somewhat features this issue. This is a really, really awesome cover art and um, that's why I like using it a lot. Um, here's, of course, the finished version of it. This is issue 131. And I like this one because it also it's a Lou Stringer story, and because it's a Lou Stringer story, it features uh, two of Lou Stringer's characters on here, which Richard Elson, he did do a fair share of stories with Lou Stringer, but Richard mostly did a bulk, most of the bulk of his Sonic the Comic work was working with Nigel Kitchen. So it was quite rare to see uh, Lou Stringer's characters in Richard Elson's style on a cover, but it's pretty cool to see Techno and Short Fuse here. And you can see the cover rough, quite a little bit was changed. Like Short Fuse's expression, uh, well not expression, sorry, he's a robot, you can't see his expression. Um, his pose, sorry, is quite different because you can see he's got both his arms out here and he's like jutting in this direction. Whereas here, both his arms are now forward. Um, towels, not too much change really. I suppose a lot more details, but the overall uh expression looks the same of course sonic was moved much more into the center and bigger it kind of looks like um yeah and towels was kind of moved a bit further to the left closer to sonic's uh foot and you've got techno here and then you've got amy running um those two both look like not much changed amy's other arm is now visible in the finished version as you can see here and yeah that's um you got Sonic here, he looks cool. Sonic's kind of a little bit more an angle, I'd say, at the rough. And then the note here says something big, big something Sonic. Maybe it was just implying that they needed to make him a little bit bigger. Yellow grass here, as um, this was going to be coloured. So, yeah, really, really nice um, cover. And, um, yeah, great stuff. So, moving on, we're at... Um, Issue 186, and uh, I love this cover art. Um, cover rough one was the one that was chosen. Um, you probably uh, maybe might be a little bit familiar with it anyway. And this one features a really, really awesome uh, picture of Commander Brutus grabbing Sonic, because of course this featured the reprint story of Project Brutus. And um, just look how badass this picture is here. Like that is uh, how you show uh, the intimidation of a, a, an opponent, a villain. Here, you see that, and you're like, "Wow, this guy's this guy's definitely uh, not to be taken lightly." When it comes to cover off too, it's good too. I like it. I mean, it's got Amy on there as now uh, on there as well, which is great. But it doesn't really show much what is really happening in this story. Kind of these, I'm guessing, was going to be the blasters from the troopers shooting them, as you can see here. This has been like a hit, and these two are like dodging out of the way. Got Amy you know, jumping this way, and Sonic jumping over here. But definitely, I'm really glad they went with cover one. I mean, here's the finished version, and just look how great that looks. You've got Brutus with his menacing, glowing eyes here, and Sonic's really struggling to get out of Brutus's grasp. And it really shows you the scale of just how um, big. Uh, Brutus and how big and muscular and Brutus is and here is actually the finished uh, cover art to show you guys and this shows you much much more of just uh, the scale of Commander Brutus because obviously the cover cuts off most of his legs in the right hand side of his body whereas this you can see pretty much his entire body with the exception of the cape where it cuts off here I mean I would love to see this whole uh, this one as a the entirety of this is a finished piece. That would be uh, incredible. So yeah, definitely glad they went with cover one with this one. That was absolutely the right choice. Okay, so we've gone back up to the game over arc now, and this is actually part one, which was Planet in Peril. And um, we've got two very different cover roughs here. And in fact, Cover Rough 2 was the one that was chosen, but it was changed uh, somewhat to the finished version. So, it featured the return of the plaques, and this snowman that Sonic's battling, this evil snowman, was actually controlled by nanobot technology by the plaques. 
And on this one, you can see it's grabbing Sonic and Sonic's struggling. And this snowman, he's, he's pretty evil looking, you know. You can see he's a pretty bad dude, right? Whereas this one, you've got Sonic and you've also got the plaques here and you've got Robotnik at the top here who's like, you know, snarling at Sonic. This is when Robotnik's sanity has just snapped and he has now turned suicidal and he's now in the process of, you know, he wants to kill everyone, right? Now, the finished cover of this pretty much keeps the most of this bottom half however it replaces Robotnik I'm going to show you with the snowman so you've got Sonic here and the plaques I guess it's not entirely accurate to the story because the plaques don't make their presence known to Sonic for another two issues yet um, I'm not sure why they replaced Robotnik with the snowman honestly I would have rather of them keep Robotnik I mean, the snowman, he's like a, he's only a one appearance villain. I mean, he's not even in many pages in the story. I mean, he's he's technically the thing that... He, he's essentially there to delay Sonic and the others while Robotnik's doing all the bad stuff out there, you know, siphoning the energy. So, don't get me wrong, the cover itself does look great. And I've never had a problem with this cover before at all. But seeing the rough and seeing this version instead, I think I would have rather have seen this one instead. Because that, that just looks awesome. That's like a film poster right there. You know, think, it's, you know, think a little bit like um, the Sonic movie box art, right? Because you've got Sonic standing here and then you've got like Jim Carrey's Robotnik like uh, behind him. It's a, a little bit like that, you can see. And I, I really like that. I would definitely have liked to have seen this one instead. And um, definitely curious why maybe the editor wanted the snowman instead. Or maybe Richard. Not sure. Okay, here we are at the Sonic Adventure arc once again, and this is the rough for the finished version of the cover. However, here are the two alternate roughs that we had, and this is for issue 179. You'll see that the rough for cover two is very similar to what was chosen, however, it was slightly altered, as I'm going to show again in a moment. Well, let's take a look at cover one. Um, Sonic's in a really, really surprised expression here. You don't often see this expression with Sonic uh, at all in Sonic the comics. So it's quite a rare expression. And you've got Tikal here, much more centered to the cover. Um, as I said, Tikal is um, a great character in this. Um, it would have been great to have seen more of her, as I've already said. I'm not going to repeat myself. Um, I believe this was the only cover art appearance she made but yeah here you've got um you know vastly approaching what sonic looks like dinosaurs but it's actually the herd with the echidnas on top of it so when it comes to the chosen cover art if you look at this one basically the positions of sonic and Tikar was moved further in the middle and more echidnas was added as you can see here note saying echidnas up top pastel washed out sandy background and more the echidnas were kind of moved a little bit further down and more were added at the top i think this cover is the record at least for most characters on an issue of sonic the comic so if we go back to the rough of what was going to be ch uh, chosen you've got all the echidnas now at the top and at the bottom and there's going to be there was a few more altercation changes you see, this guy's got like a net and he's going to try to catch him. But in, in, it was changed to a shield. Cause it, well, it's got a shield question mark here. We'll see the final one in a moment. And all these guys have got spears. Sonic saying he needs the, the note here saying, move slightly left. And this one's saying uh, a bit more detail, it says there. So here is the finished version. As you can see, the Echidna now doesn't have a net. You can clearly see the. Um, well, I believe this one's meant to be Knuckles. I'm sure it is. Um, and yeah, this is this is really awesome. You, you've you've got a lot more characters here. Um, I, I have seen the original for this one. Unfortunately, I don't have it to show you, but you can see all these other echidnas at the bottom here in much much more detail. But yeah, this is a really cool uh, cover. And of course, again, free pack of chewits, of course, right? Um, yes. 
as interesting as a pose of Sonic this is, and obviously to Cole is a bit more prominent on the cover. I'm glad they went with uh, this one instead. This one, this one's um, pretty cool to see the, all, all this echidna, all the echidnas around them. Okay, so we've reached uh, issue 200 again, and you'll be thinking, hang on, like we've already done issue 200. These roughs, these are exactly the same. They pretty much are. From what I could gather, the rough. Uh, the second one here is uh, exactly the same. However, the rough, uh, the first one's a little bit different because all of the characters are removed. And when I was looking through this file, um, I thought myself, this is the same thing that's um, popped up again. So if you're interested to look at the comparison of the two, just go back uh, in this video and find where I was talking about issue 200 um, before, and you will see the difference. Basically, I guess they was intended originally to only have Sonic on the cover of issue 200. Because when they added all the characters here, you can't really see the, the 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 tearing of the page here as much. So, kind of glad they added the extra characters now. But as I said earlier, I do like this one as well. The pose of Sonic's pretty damn awesome. Here's the finished version again, with um, Towels, Knuckles, and Amy. And guess what? Three shirts. Okay. Here we are at the roughs for issue 210, and we've got Knack the Weasel on both covers, how he's much more prominent on the rough cover for one. Um, great to see Knack, he's a great villain in uh, Sonic the Comic. Um, started out originally as a member of the Chaotix crew, uh, in Sonic the Comic at least, before betraying them to the Brotherhood of Metallics. Eventually aligning himself later in the series with uh, Lord Sidewinder and then Dr. Robotnik. So Knack the Weasel, who has the, has the ability sorry, to uh, both decrease and increase his size. As you can see, he's got Sonic here in the palm of his hand and he's looking like really smug because he knows he can do whatever he wants to him here. Because what, what, what harm can Sonic do to Knack at this size? And on this one, you've got Sonic with the Chaotix around him, and you can only see Knack's feet. He's kind of looking down at them. Um, honestly, I can see why they went with the first one instead. I think this one's much better. And you can see that some of these uh, artifacts in the background here, they were actually removed for the final cover. I'm going to show you right here. It looks like there's actually like a monitor or a screen here that's next to Knack, but that was actually um, changed and it was actually removed entirely just uh, to see the shading of uh, Knack. But this is pretty cool. I mean, look how angry Sonic looks here as he's looking up at Knack. Um, otherwise, I don't think much was changed. It looks like these sparkle effects that were going to be around Sonic here were actually removed and just having this kind of glow around him as well as he's in Knack's hand. So yeah, definitely, definitely. Prefer. As I said, it's great to see Chaotix as always on a cover, but it's Knack's a very, very rare character to see on a um, a cover artwork. And here we have the conclusion to uh, this story, and this was uh, from issue two hundred and eleven. And this again, both of them feature Sonic and Knack, however, both in different uh, circumstances. Here you've got Sonic, uh, you know, zooming all around him and Knack's trying to grab him in his enhanced size. And here you've got Sonic hitting Knack with his own capsule, which would, uh, you know, backfire on Knack and he'd actually decrease the microscopic um, size. And we wouldn't see him for a very long time after this. So this cover up kind of shows you the conclusion of... Um, what was going to happen in this story. Um, both are cool. In a way, I kind of would have liked to have seen Rough One instead, because you've got all this detail of the computery and machinery around him. And as I said, this is uh, this would have definitely been a much better look at Knack, as opposed to this one, because some of it's actually um, blacked out by, obviously, the blast uh, from the capsule hitting um, Knack. Here's what the final one looks like. And you can actually see they actually mirrored the uh, the uh, artwork for this one to fit on the cover. I'm guessing that's so they could get the Sonic the Comic title here and they wanted to put the, uh, the text here. But yeah, honestly, I suppose Cover Rough 2 is a little bit more of a basic one. But I, I think I would have liked to have seen Cover Rough 1 for that one instead. 
still awesome as well though and at least we got you know that knack on the previous issue okay here we have um it's interesting one here because it says uh i think this was actually a bit of a mistake because it says cover roughs 105 and this definitely wasn't issue 105 this was actually one of the reprint uh issues it might have been two no it wasn't 205 but it was uh it was much later so we've got rough one and rough two rough two was the one that was chosen however this was when sonic had just first come into the special uh, special zone to chase after supersonic this was just after the running wild arc and um, both of these circumstances happen. You don't actually see this happen in the strip, only at the very beginning bit where Sonic jumps out of the Omni Viewer into the special zone. However, it's a completely different angle. Whereas this one, Sonic sees all these like uh, residents and thugs and criminals fighting in the street in Planet Meridian or um, New Tech City in Planet Meridian. And Sonic's like, what on earth are you guys doing? And Sonic, of course, actually gets arrested in this. Um, both covers are really good. Honestly, I think I actually would have rather have seen this one instead, because this just looks really funny. I mean, you've got that like, Mighty and SBO. They're like holding the Omni viewer. And Charmy's like, whoa. And the Vector's like, can't believe what's happening here. And Sonic's like really angrily like coming through the Omni viewer. He's serious because he wants to track down Super Sonic. He knows how much of a threat he is. Um, whereas this guy, this one, it's good because Sonic's just kind of bewildered by what's going on here in the special zone. And then you got all these like random, as I said, guys. Here's the finished version, and you get a much more look at the color and, and of um, all these characters. It's a nice cover. It is a nice cover, but I think after seeing the rough for this one, I think I would definitely have rather have seen this one. That's just my personal opinion. You uh, guys, let me know what you think. Okay, here we have um, the cover roughs for 206. Now that actually uh, confirms it that that actually was meant to be 205 then because this story actually takes place before us because this is uh, Heroes and Villains Part 1. So this is the cover artwork for 206. Two very different covers once again. We've both got Sonic on them. However, totally different characters are with him. This one has Lord Sidewinder and he is very much uh, front and centre really when it comes to this cover art. This shows how much of a threat he is and I love how his snake staff actually is peeling over the Sonic the Comic logo. And this one, cover rough too, this is the one that's chosen and it's got Guess Who's Back and it's uh, <laughs> you can see sparkly things around his gloves, it's pretty obvious who it's going to be. That's right, Super Sonic Back. Um, this was the one that was chosen. Honestly, I like both. Both are awesome. Um, you know, as I said, it's always great to see Super Sonic, but you only see his hands, really. Maybe it would have been good to have this one instead, to give, you know, Lord Sidewinder finally that des deserved space, uh, uh, deserved spot, sorry, um, on a cover artwork. Here is the uh, finished version, and it kind of... Um, I guess you could kind of say it spoils the surprise a little bit because the note here says guess who's back, but they changed it with, you know, Super Sonic. And this is a very rare issue that actually contains a text bubble on it with a character talking. You know, you only usually got that in the actual strips themselves. Um, it does say guess who's back there, though. I guess they kept that bit at the top there. You've got much more detail here on the gloves as well that Richard's put on here for Super Sonic. Here is the um, original artwork for this one, the original clean cover. Much more uh, shot here of Supersonic's hands. You can see that all, more, much more of his fingers and the glove parts here. And um, the background part here, uh, it looks very like there's, well, there's nothing there at all. And it was, this was all added digitally, like the uh, electricity kind of like light beam that's coming out as Supersonic is emerging. Pretty cool. And I do like that we've got a back shot of Sonic here. Again, pretty rare to see on a cover artwork of him, uh, you know, especially the back part of his uh, sneakers too. 
Okay, so we've actually reached the final end of this video and I've left these at the end because these technically aren't stunt of the comic related, but I really wanted to show you these guys as well because these were included and these are really, really awesome pieces of Sonic history. Um, a couple of you might have already recognized kind of what this is and what it's from, but for those that aren't, this is actually from the very first Sonic the Hedgehog annual that was released uh, in the United Kingdom in 92? I think it was. it was. No, I think it was 93, actually. So, of course, you've got to think Tails is on the cover. So, um, when did Sonic 2 come out? It was like November time. So, unless it released very late on. Um, yeah. But anyway, I'm getting off topic here. This was... Um, these images here are actually the very first illustrations that uh, Richard Elson ever drew of Sonic the Hedgehog. These are literally the first ever two pieces he ever drew before he was even hired by uh, Fleetway to work on Sonic the Comic. So these are really, really awesome. And these are the two cover roughs that were chosen for the annual. The second one was the one that was chosen. However, this first one's very interesting because you've actually got Sat AM's uh, Dr. Robotnik here. And uh, I believe this is the only time that Richard has ever drawn this version of uh, Dr. Robotnik. And how awesome does he look? Like, really, he really drew uh, a great looking uh, Sat AM Sonic the Hedgehog cartoon version of Dr. Robotnik. He looks proper menacing there. So you can imagine if they had have used this version in uh, Sonic the Comic, this is kind of how he would have looked. So, as I said, this was the one that was chosen. And um, they changed quite a lot for the finished version. I'm going to show you the finished version right now. Here it is. So Robotnik was made a lot more uh, visible here. He's kind of like he's drawn way back in the background here. Sonic's uh, was changed quite a bit, as you can see. He's kind of um, made much more on character model here as opposed to this rough. And Tails, Tails doesn't, the pose of Tails is pretty much the same, just made a little bit more bigger as he's jumping forward. Um, and here's classic Dr. Robotnik. Love all the rings here at the bottom here and win a mega CD. That's how far we've got back here. The official Sonic the Hedgehog yearbook. I said annual, didn't I? But um, you know, annual yearbook, same thing. But yeah, these are two really awesome pieces of history. Um, you know, if Richard had never done these, then he may never had joined uh, Sonic the Comic. Who knows? And then Sonic the Comic may not have even lasted past issue six, which it wasn't originally meant to uh, anyway. It was like six, six, seven, or eight. It was. It was only meant to be like an eight-issue run. Uh, Sonic the comic before it was meant to be cancelled, but it sold so well that it kept going So yeah, that is it um, I guess I you know part of me inside would have loved to have seen this one finished instead It doesn't really make uh, much sense to the yearbook because this version of Robotnik wasn't used in the yearbook It was the classic Dr. Robotnik design so it makes sense why they didn't go with this one But really would have loved to have seen this one finished just for the sake of it no, it's a shame Richard doesn't really do commissions because it would have been great to see what he's uh, this another version of this Robotnik would be. And again, is the finished version again of the chosen one. Well, guys, uh, we've reached the end of the video, and firstly, thank you very much for those that actually made it all the way to the end. This video went on for a long time. Uh, few out several hours now this has gone on for i haven't actually looked at the total time of recording for this um but there was a lot to go through and a lot to talk about so i really really appreciate you guys uh sticking with me all the way to the end especially if you couldn't and you've watched it in parts you know who cares thank you anyway just uh i'm always uh overwhelmed by the positive support i receive from my uh fan base here on youtube you guys really really are awesome and it keeps me striving to keep creating more content to show you guys i hope you enjoyed this video and enjoyed looking at these roughs uh as much as i first did because i was honestly um as i said at the start i was blown away with seeing these new images that i had never seen before really really awesome stuff and uh, um, i can't thank uh, richard elson enough for sending these over um to share um uh yeah that's it that's enough of me rambling on 
Uh, once again, thank you very much, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Take care of yourselves, and I will see you on the next upload.